Oh, hi. Hi, everybody. Sorry. I was just enjoying my bowl of crow. Let me just put this down here. Yes, 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 I know. I know. We have to talk about the elephant in the room. Tonight, we'll go down in history, WWE history. A major return took place tonight at Survivor Series. I couldn't believe it myself. And he looked great. I will say he looked great. First time we've seen him in a while. The return of Randy Orton. For the first time in 18 months, we had Randy Orton back on WWE television. I'm sure that's what everybody is going to want to talk about here, right? At the beginning of the Survivor Series review. We're going to talk about Randy Orton, but obviously we're going to talk about somebody else first. We are going to talk about the big news, which is that for the first time since 2014, so we are going on nearly 10 years to the day when CM Punk talked about how that day he walked out, he said goodbye to sports entertainment, and he said hello to professional wrestling when he debuted in All Elite Wrestling. Well, guess what? Today, on November 25th, 2023, CM Punk walked back into the world of sports entertainment. Look, I didn't think it would happen. I didn't think that at the end of the day, Triple H and WWE would go ahead, not this quickly, and would do what they did here tonight on this pay-per-view. But in fact, CM Punk is back in WWE. CM Punk, who was fired two months ago by Tony Khan, fired from AEW, fired after his backstage altercation with Jack Perry, and apparently making Tony Khan fear for his life, whatever he did, whatever he said, Tony Khan was shaking in his boots, he had piss running down his leg, and he had no choice but to fire CM Punk. He left in disgrace from AEW. Is now back in WWE. You listen to that crowd in Chicago. Cult of personality is a very apropos name, I think, for his theme music. Because no matter what the man does, the people love him. The people in Chicago will always love CM Punk. And tonight, he walked out there and got a monster reaction to close out the show after what I thought was a very good War Games match, and we did, in fact, get the return of Randy Orton. But that will now be completely overshadowed by CM Punk. This will go down as one of the biggest stories now of 2023, and it will be one of the biggest stories in wrestling going into 2024, because Punk returns at a time where we are now heading into the Royal Rumble. And if we're heading into the Royal Rumble, that means we are now heading into WrestleMania. And so immediately now the conversation will pivot to what does CM Punk do at WrestleMania? Does CM Punk get his WrestleMania main event? That he was, I mean, honestly, he's talked about the fact that he was upset with The Miz many years ago, that The Miz got a WrestleMania main event before he did. That's how much it meant to him. CM Punk is back in a WWE ring in 2023. Holy fucking shit. That was my reaction when I saw him walk out and I heard that music. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, it seems like maybe they're going off the air a little bit early. There was just something about the way that all the baby faces were posing in the ring there at the end of the show that made me think, well, eh, is something else about to happen here? And then boom, the music hits, he walks out, and I was as shocked as anybody. That's why I told you. I told you people, I said, look, I will eat crow. I had to go fix myself a, a hot bowl of this. This tastes like shit. But I told you I would. I was wrong. I thought CM Punk, if he was going to come back to WWE, it would not happen until well into next year. I did not think that was the way that Survivor Series was going to close. And I want to take a moment here before I even get into anything else. I have to give Triple H and WWE a lot of credit. Because we live in an age where it is very difficult to pull the wool over people's eyes. It is very difficult to pull off a genuine surprise. And some people may laugh at that and they may say, well, you know, was it really all that surprising? People have been talking about Punk for weeks. And there were people who swore on their mother's life that Punk was going to be on the show tonight. A lot of people were hoping for him. A lot of people were expecting it. But a lot of people like myself didn't actually think it was going to happen. And right up until today, right up until today, you had Fight for you had all these different wrestling news websites that said, look, we've heard nothing new on this front. Unless they're really hiding something. It's not going to happen. And they pulled the wool over a lot of people's eyes today. 
And I like that. The fact that they were able to pull off a huge surprise like that. That doesn't happen very often these days. So kudos. Kudos to Triple H and WWE for pulling off a fast one on a lot of people at a time when that's not an easy thing to do. Now, of course, the question becomes, where the hell do they go from here? Because obviously this was a deal that was reached relatively recently. I don't know when the deal was made. I don't know if Triple H at the press conference is talking about it as we speak. I'm sure we'll get more details over the next 24 hours. But because we are heading into Royal Rumble of WrestleMania season, they already had their plans locked in for people like Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins and all those people at the top of the card, Drew McIntyre probably, like all these different people. Where now does CM Punk fit into the equation here? Because CM Punk is a massive star. Nobody ever said that CM Punk was not a major name. He absolutely is. And there's going to be a lot of people who are upset that he's back. There's going to be a lot of people who are very happy that he's back. I already had people coming at me. Oh, po pointing the finger at me, making fun of me. Look, CM Punk coming back is a very big deal. CM Punk coming back is good for business. Not only is it good for WWE's business, it's good for my business too. So you can mock me and laugh at me all you want to and have some fun at my expense. I'll be laughing all the way to the bank. That's not the point. I had a lot of issues with CM Punk and the way things went down in AEW. Going all the way back to the scrum last year, brawl out, that whole situation, it was a fucking embarrassment. I said it a year ago and I'll say it again now. And he is as much responsible for that as anybody. And he of all people, as a veteran, working with all these people and these younger people should know better. That, and I honestly, I point back to that whole brawl out situation in AEW last year. AEW has not been the same since brawl out. Something has been off. It never really got back to that feeling that it had before everything exploded in Chicago last year. And Tony Khan decided to bring him back and he was going to make him the face of collision. Tony Khan has a television show that only premiered in June. CM Punk was going to be the face of that show. CM Punk was banning people left and right from collision. Right? That was his show. He had creative control something that he's not going to have in WWE in the same way that he had in AEW. That's going to be something to look out for. The idea that CM Punk would come back and work for the doofus son-in-law that he talked about in that promo all those years ago, one of the last people that CM Punk was in the room with when he left WWE was Triple H. Vince McMahon wanted him to work with Triple H at WrestleMania, and he didn't want to do that. CM Punk has no love loss with Triple H, and now here we are in a situation where he's working for Triple H. I feel like I'm living in, in, in just another fucking timeline here. This is going to be very interesting to see how all of this is going to play out. CM Punk was on an apology tour earlier this year. He stopped it raw backstage. He wanted to have a conversation with Triple H. He wanted to make amends. Why did he want to talk to Triple H? Now, he didn't have a chance to say more than five words to him before he got kicked out of the building. But even back then, it seemed like, you know, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Is he making a play to go back to WWE? Is he trying to get, you know, show Tony Khan that, you know, look, I, I have all the cards here. He was playing a game even earlier this spring. Things went down the way they did at Wembley Stadium. That leg brawl out, also a fucking embarrassment. It was an embarrassment for CM Punk, it was an embarrassment for Jack Perry, and frankly, it was an embarrassment for Tony Khan as well. For him to go on television and say that he feared for his life, right? I don't know that that needed to be said, but he did what he did. He lost his meal ticket. He was banking everything on CM Punk when it came to Saturday nights and it blew up at his face. What must he be thinking now? What was Tony Khan thinking the moment he heard the first chord of that song play, here comes CM Punk to cult of personality, and there's the guy he was going to build his entire franchise around. A franchise that isn't doing very well right now. So what must be going through his head? I think Tony Khan absolutely made the right decision when he fired CM Punk. CM Punk deserved to be fired for what he did. But now he's being given yet another opportunity here. He is the most fortunate man in professional wrestling. CM Punk is now being given the keys to the kingdom to come back in, to come back home and make this big grandiose return, and maybe even get a main event at WrestleMania. He's being given another chance. 
And all I can say is that for his sake and the sake of all of his fans, I genuinely hope that CM Punk does not blow this opportunity. I genuinely hope that CM Punk can be on his very best behavior. Because if you look at the WWE roster, there's plenty of people for him to work with. There's plenty of big money matches for CM Punk to have. CM Punk against Seth Rollins. I mean, shit, that could be one of the main events of WrestleMania next year. CM Punk and Roman Reigns. Right? You can go up and down the list of different people for him to work with. I don't know if it's going to blow up in Triple H's face and Nick Khan's face or not. I don't know how much influence Vince McMahon had in this or if he was completely pushed to the side. If he had to give the okay for this, we're going to get all those details, I assume, in due time. But this is going to rock the wrestling world because nobody knows how this is going to play out. But all I know is this. I hope for his sake and the sake of all of his fans out there who pray and worship at the altar of CM Punk, Phil Brooks, that things work out a lot better this time than they did in AEW. We're going to find out. There's a lot of peace and harmony in that WWE locker room. There was a lot of talk about main eventers, top guys in that company, who did not want him there. Top guys who did not want to work with him. What must they be thinking? Have they been in contact with Punk? Have they made amends? If not, if you're watching this and this is the first you're hearing of it, and you hear that music and you see him walk out, what must those people be thinking, right? There's a lot of people that have talked about CM Punk before publicly. Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, what must they be thinking? Because the last thing that Triple H and WWE needs is any sort of, you know, eruption in their own locker room to upend whatever it is. You know, that, again, I say they have a harmony in that locker room. It seems like for the most part, people in that locker room get along. You know, is this going to upset the apple cart? I don't know. Obviously, Triple H and WWE felt like it was a risk worth taking. They felt like there's enough money to be made that we can overlook that. And if Phil is on his best behavior, then hey, you know what? He can be a huge asset to this company. The sad thing is he can be. I don't know if in the end it's going to work out or not. Things did not work out well the last time. Things did not work out at his last employer. I hope for his sake this time it does. One thing I will say is that it made for one of the most memorable endings to a WWE Survivor Series in the history of this show. And I believe this year was the, I think they said, was it the 37th annual Survivor Series, I believe? Outside of the Montreal Screwjob, this may be the most memorable finish to a Survivor Series show since 1997. Overall, I actually thought it was a good show. Because, believe it or not, there were other things that happened on this show. Even though this is all anybody is going to be talking. I mean, this is going to completely overshadow every other fucking thing that happened on this pay-per-view. And sadly, it's going to overshadow the fact that there were two really good War Games matches on this show. The women's match and the men's match. And the fact that we have Randy Orton back, and this guy was looking fucking jacked when he came out. Randy Orton walked out for that main event tonight. He was looking yoked. He looked like he's, he's been chomping at the bit. He's been ready to come back. He looked so happy to be there. And the fans were happy to see him. How about being one of those fans at the All-State Arena tonight in Chicago when you are hoping for CM Punk, but you're really you're not sure if he's going to be there, and you know you're going to get Randy Orton. You get Randy Orton. He got a huge reaction when he came out, and then they give you CM Punk on top of Randy Orton. Right? Hey, look, they took the set out and they put extra seats in that building. They had over 17,000 people in that building tonight. Those people got a memory that they will not soon forget. They didn't just get Randy Orton. They got Randy Orton and CM Punk. Maybe that's the WrestleMania match. I don't know. You know, they're getting Orton back kind of late here going into Mania season. Punk just came in. Maybe the match is Orton and Punk. We already got that match. <laughs> WrestleMania 27. Maybe we're going to get it again. I don't know. But holy shit. Triple H, maybe, let me tell you something, man. Triple H, he could not wait. He could not wait. As soon as he got the book, as soon as he got that creative power last year, he got rid of this Raw versus SmackDown bullshit, which was so played out. For years, he wanted to bring War Games to the main roster, and Vince McMahon said, no, pal. So he brought it to NXT. As soon as Vince McMahon took a backseat, Triple H got rid of that Raw versus SmackDown shit. And he brought war games to the main roster last year. And now it's become seemingly the annual staple of Survivor Series. The one thing I will say, I do wish that they did not completely get rid of the elimination matches. To me, 
as someone who has watched every Survivor series, and you know, I'm an old school fan, I wish they would at least have one traditional Survivor Series elimination match every year. And Triple H is a fan of, you know, he's a history buff himself when it comes to wrestling. I'm surprised he doesn't throw one on there just to keep it around. Uh, so unfortunately, we didn't get one of those this year. But let's just get into this here. And we're going to talk more about CM Punk later. And I know you guys have a lot to say about CM Punk because holy shit, I've been inundated by messages here. So I am going to be taking your super chats. Uh, so definitely uh, keep sending them on in. This is your Survivor Series War Games 2023 review. It is November 25th. I am the Solo Monster. Thank you so much for being with me here. All 3,000 plus, nearly 3,400. Triple H made his famous point with Punk. Did he take the picture? Oh, I got to see that picture. Did he take the picture? Pointing at CM Punk. You know, Triple H on some level has got to be enjoying this, right? It's Tony Khan is convinced that WWE is constantly trying to fuck him and trying to railroad him. And you just know. I mean, look what happened with the whole NXT versus Dynamite thing last month, the way they loaded that show up. You know that on some level he's enjoying this. Even if he really does not like CM Punk, I think he's willing to overlook that. And in his mind, he's like, oh, we fucked him. We got him, right? Because he knows. He knows Tony Khan is looking at this. He's just shaking his head. You know that Triple H is enjoying himself. Anyway, like and subscribe. I think, what did I say? 500 likes for Be The Booker? We could do 1,000. My God. Hit that like button. I want at least 1,000 likes. Especially from all the punk fans who I'm sure are liking what they saw tonight. Super chats are open. And by the way, for those of you who are here because of the uh, Wrestle Rumble contest, Yes, indeed. The Madness Contest. We're going to pick one very lucky winner for the Macho Man Legacy Championship belt. That will be later on in the stream. So thank you to the nearly 1,000, I'm told, according to Wrestle Rumble, who got their entries in. So again, we'll be getting to that a little bit later on. Survivor Series. And I am going to check, by the way. I'm going to check in a little bit to see if anything important was said at the press conference. So if anything really important was said, Chime in and let me know, but we'll check that out a little bit uh, a little bit later. I don't know what Triple H may have said. Oh, by the way, you know, on the CM Punk stuff, I should mention this. There is one reason to celebrate, even if you're not a fan of Punk being back. And that is because uh, Cryback, I mean Ryback, Ryback apparently, and I don't know because I'm blocked, but I've been told that Ryback claimed that if CM Punk came back at Survivor Series, he would officially retire. Now, funny me. I thought he's been retired for about a decade now. I can't remember the last time Ryback even wrestled a match. He's already been retired. But uh, maybe we could all get together and sing the na-na-na, hey-hey, goodbye song for Ryback before we get out of here later. So Survivor Series opened with the sirens. Oh, it could only mean one thing. We open with the first of two War Games matches, the women's War Games match. We had Damage Control, Bailey, Io Sky, Kyrie Sane, and Asuka. Again, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Shotzi. This was the sponsored match of the night. In case you couldn't tell, we had ruffles all over the place. We had ruffles on the outside of the ring. We had ruffles on the screens. I'm surprised they weren't beating each other over the head with bags of ruffles. One member of each team begins. After five minutes, a member from the Advantage team will be released. And every three minutes thereafter, alternating members enter the match. Only after all members have entered the War Games match will the match officially begin. It's either pinfall or submission only. If you try to escape the cage, your team forfeits the match. So don't do that. Even though there's no top on the cage, you're not allowed to escape. So they decided, if you want to know how they decided the advantage for this match, they decided the advantage for this match by fan poll, sponsored by Ruffles. So if you went online and voted, you could decide who had the advantage in this match. I'll give you one guess as to who had the advantage in this match. Of course, it was the babyface team. And honestly, it sucks when the babyfaces have the advantage in war games, but you knew that's the way it was going to go. So Bailey started for damage control. Becky Lynch 
started for the babyface team. And she went right for a disarm her pretty early on. Michael Cole said it can't end at a submission because not everybody is in the match. So she can use the move, but she's not going to actually win anything with it. So outside the ring, Dakota Kai was there. And she slipped a kendo stick through the holes in the cage for Bailey to use on Becky. Shotzi was the next entrant out into the match. And Bailey tried to hold the door shut and keep her out. But she got the door slammed back in her face. Shotzi began pulling chairs and a trash can out from under the ring, and the crowd chanted for tables. And they were not very happy that Shotzi got into the cage without bringing a table into the ring. Becky and Shotzi ended up double teaming Bailey. She started scaling the cage to try to escape. And the announcers again pointed out that if she did, the match would be over. Becky and Shotzi caught up with her. So Io is out next. I love Io Sky. I was wondering if we were going to get the spot. That's what I was wondering. Because Io's been in a bunch of these War Games matches already. I don't know how many she's been in. She's been in at least two or three. So Io comes out. She grabs a chain from underneath the ring. And she brings it inside with her. She used it on Becky and Shotzi. Why Io is the the... monster a punk uh -oh. hater? Why does he hate punk so much? What did he ever do to him? Uh... Oh, boy. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing that one a lot. Solid monster, punk hater. Oh boy, they're gonna have they're gonna have fun with me. So Io jumped from the top rope in one ring, and into the other ring, she hit both women with a springboard missile drop kick. Bianca Belair was out to the ring next. She had two braids this time, and she used them to whip the heels. She picked up Io in a powerbomb position, tossed her over her head into a trash can that was wedged in the ropes. And then she put Bailey down with a spine buster. So Kyrie Sane was in next for damage control. She marched. When I say she marched, she literally marched. That's that's I guess that's how I do my march, I guess. She marched down to the ring. Once she got to the cage door, she stopped. She went underneath the ring and she pulled out an oversized trash can lid. The fans wanted tables, so they booed. Well, you know, it's a good thing Punk came out at the end of this show. All these times, these people were very upset that they didn't get their tables. And here I thought tables were going to be the most over thing on the entire show. So she brought the lid into the ring with her, hit Shotzi with it. Damage control, they stacked chairs on top of Shotzi. And Kyrie ran the rope. She got popped up into the air by Io. And she delivered an elbow drop on the way down. Bianca came back, she pressed Kyrie over her head, tossed her from one ring to the other onto Bailey and Io. Charlotte Flair was the final entrant for the baby faces. There was a spot where she hit Kyrie and Bailey with a double natural selection off the top. Charlotte and Becky had a brief stare down. Damage control used that distraction to knock them into each other. A fine time for the two of them not to get along, by the way. Then we got the spot. Yes, we got the spot. Hey, Darian, just subscribe to the channel. Hey, anybody who's subscribing to the channel, you might not be able to uh, chime in on the chat. You got to be here for two weeks. But if you can, chime in and say hello. I promise Look, we won't everyone, bite. It's Samoa Bro. Actually, there are some freaks in here. They might bite, so just be careful. But I was wondering if we were going to get the spot, and we did. Eo went to the top of the cage and dropped one end of a chain down to Dakota Kai. And Dakota Kai took a garbage can and she attached it to the chain. And then Io, like a fishing rod, she brought the garbage can up to the top of the cage. So she's standing up there on top of the cage. And I have secondhand anxiety watching this because I'm, I'm afraid of heights. So anytime I see anybody up there and you know they're standing there and they don't really have anything to hold on to, I'm, I'm like sweating bullets over here. But she had a big ass smile on her face and she took the garbage can and she, while she's smiling, she placed it over her head and we've seen her do this before, placed it over her head. Now she can't see. And she hits a blind crossbody dive from the top of the cage and she wipes everybody out down below. And that got a deserving chant of holy shit from the crowd. I don't understand. Yeah, some people hate that spot. I don't understand that. I, 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 
pop every time she does it. I love it. EO is great. EO is fantastic. So Asuka was the last to enter the match. And she went under the ring. The crowd cheered, hoping for tables. But then she pulled out two kendo sticks. And they booed. She pulled out kendo sticks and they booed again. And then finally she pulled out a table and the people went nuts. The people went absolutely bonkers for this. So she also grabbed a fire extinguisher. This would come back to bite her a little bit later on. Once she got into the cage, we got the announcement that the war games have officially begun. Now it's the match beyond. I wish they would still call it that, but that's that's what it is. The match beyond. And so from this point forward now, pinfalls and submissions uh, are valid. Damage control chain Becky and uh, Bianca together while they were sitting on the mat back to back. And then simultaneously delivered four drop kicks to them. Asuka blew mist in Shotzi's face, hit a missile drop kick to Becky, who was inside a trash can. Charlotte went to the top of the cage. You knew what was coming next. And I hold my breath. Every time I see her go up there because she's got those long legs and she always over-rotates because she was a gymnast and she can't help herself, but it always looks like shit whenever she over-rotates. And sure enough, she hits the moonsault. Oh, it's a party. All the CM Punk fans are celebrating tonight. This is your night. I mean, this is your night. It's your, hey, your night to gloat. Your night to celebrate. <laughs> Look at this. Fahad says, Happy CM Punk Return Day. Fahad dropping a $226 super chat on this fucking stream. Do you believe this? Guy? Unbelievable. Fahad, thank you, brother. Happy CM Punk Return Day. Back to you. I didn't know you were such a big fan. Apparently, CM Punk, I'm told, did not speak at the media scrum. See, I actually think that's smart because you're going to have a lot of people wondering. <laughs> they're going to be wondering about a lot of things and they're going to want to hear from him. And I think there's something to be said, honestly, for sort of holding him out of things like that and letting people wonder and ask questions, keep them thinking. Tonight was one of the greatest cliffhangers in WWE history. Again, I got to give Triple H a lot of credit for, for doing what he did and going off the air that way. You know, the announcers laid out. And every Well, we'll talk about that later. We'll have a lot more to say about that later. But Charlotte hit her moonsault. Now, on the way down, she was nearly vertical. And her feet caught Io in the head. So she's very fortunate she didn't stomp her brains out on the way down. Then we got a double team move from Becky and Charlotte. And the two of them finally hugged and made up. Aw. They embraced. Charlotte and Becky have put their differences aside. As long as I don't have to see another terrible belt swap between them. Mazel tub. I'm happy for them. But they got attacked from behind again. And uh, each of them, though, this time managed to apply their respective submission holds. Kyrie tried an elbow drop on the way down, though. Becky, I think Becky got her feet up. She put her in to disarm her. Bailey broke that up with a running knee strike. Bianca put Asuka on her shoulders, and Shotzi hit a nice missile drop kick. Bianca sprayed the fire extinguisher in Asuka's face, and then Kyrie blasted. And I do mean blasted. <laughs> blasted Shotzi in the face with that oversized garbage can lid. And actually, at the end of the match, it looked like uh, Shotzi was, was bleeding. She might have had a cut by her eye or on the side of her head. And I'm almost positive it came from that garbage can lid shot. Charlotte went to go spear Kyrie. Now we're at the finish. She goes to spear Kyrie. Bailey dives in the way like a Secret Service agent. She dives in the way, although I, I don't know any Secret Service agents that look like her. But she dives in the way, and she takes the bullet. And she takes the spear from Charlotte. Shotzi then hits Bailey with the top rope senton. Bianca drops Bailey with the KOD. And then she hands Bailey off to Becky, who's on the middle rope. From the middle rope, Becky Lynch delivers a manhandle slam to Bailey all the way down through a table and gets the pin to win it for the baby faces. I thought this was an excellent War Games match. 
I thought it really picked up in those last, I don't know, maybe five to seven minutes or so. Uh, but I thought it was an excellent effort here from them. A lot of action. I was never bored by it. Uh, a lot of action, some memorable spots, memorable moments. Uh, I'm glad we got the spot again from EO Sky. Uh, I, you know what? I really hope that she does go to WrestleMania as the champion. I would still be shocked if either Charlotte or Bianca are either not the champion or challenging for the title going into WrestleMania. Because as I pointed out before, in all of their WrestleMania matches, Charlotte has never been at WrestleMania in a, in a non-title situation. Bianca Belair does not have nearly as many WrestleManias as Charlotte does, but every single one that she's had, it's been a championship match. I just find it hard to believe they won't be challenging for a title. Maybe it's a four-way. Maybe instead of it being, let's say, Bailey and EO, it's Bailey, EO, Charlotte, and Bianca. Maybe that's what it is. But I really hope EO Sky can make it to WrestleMania as the champion. And as I look at Bailey, and, and we all know where this is headed. We all know what's going to end up happening. Bailey has got a babyface run ahead of her. Bailey has been a heel for four years. And so it's time. I think it's a good time for her to switch over to the other side, change things up a little bit. Bailey has to be near the top of the list of favorites right now for the Women's Royal Rumble match as far as a winner. If she doesn't win the Women's Royal Rumble, I think she has to be a favorite for the Elimination Chamber. She can win her way to a women's title match at WrestleMania, and it could be Bailey and Io at WrestleMania. I think that could be where things are headed here. But I thought they told a great story here with her taking the bullet for her team. She was doing everything in her power to make sure that her team got the win. Even right down, she started the match, right? She was the first one in there against Becky, and she took the bullet from Charlotte. And so it makes it all that much more sadder when you think about the fact that she's going to get booted out of this group, it's only a matter of time. Uh, I actually think it was smart for them not to do it tonight. There's no reason to, to kind of give that angle away here on this show and have her you know, beaten down. Uh, when you can get many more weeks worth of television out of this before you actually pull the trigger on that. So uh, I thought that was smart. Uh, and that's probably the way I would have gone with it also. I want to welcome everybody, by the way, who is coming on in here. We are uh, talking about Survivor Series. We are talking about the return of CM Punk and Randy Orton. CM Punk in big, bold face, and then Randy Orton in little, little tight face here. Poor Randy Orton. We're going to be getting to that a little bit later on when we get to the uh, main event. Be sure to hit the like button as well. I think we're over 1,000 likes already, so thank you for that. Now, backstage, this is one of those throwaway segments. This, this is one of the contractually obligated sponsor segments here we had otis tozawa maxine dupree piper niven and chelsea green they were sitting on a couch and they were eating ruffles in case you didn't know who the sponsor was for this show see i don't eat potato chips anymore but if i, if I had ruffles here i would have them on screen with me i would have them right here with my bowl of crow i still have a little bit left in the bowl here by the way i'm gonna have to finish this later like i said this stuff tastes like shit Maybe I'll wash it down with one of those Ric Flair energy drinks. That's the last thing I need. Pretty Deadly showed up. And they tried to pull the chips away from Otis. Otis does not seem like the kind of person you would want to pull a bag of chips away from. So they started, fly they started fighting. The chips went flying. And then R-Truth pops up. This was his return. Not only did Randy Orton make his return. Not only did CM Punk make his return. R-Truth is back. Oh my god. <laughs> are we having another party here? How many parties are we going to throw tonight? We're having a party oh my here. goodness. Silver no, Tower. With a $289 super chat. Happy CM Punk Day, he says. Happy CM Punk. The, the Punk fans are, the punk fans are out, man. The punk fans, I would imagine, are the ones that are going to be on the streets of Chicago tonight, probably like overturning cars and setting cars on fire and stuff like those idiot sports fans when their team wins, right, sometimes. All right, don't do that. Don't be like that. Hey, Silver Tower, thank you, man. You are awesome. You're the fucking man. Love that guy. So R-Truth is back. He pops up from behind the couch. And he's got a bowl of chips, and he got a big pop, too. When he showed up on screen, he got a big pop from the fans in the building. 
Uh, for those who don't know, he tore his ACL about a year ago. I think it was on NXT in November of last year uh, in a match with Grayson Waller. And I think he had some complications during his recovery. I think he needed a second surgery. So, hey, look, I love our truth It's good to see him back. And anyway, this all ended with uh, Tozawa doing a very stupid dance. Elsewhere, in the back, Jey Uso met with Sami Zayn. And Zayn warned him, look, Randy Orton is not here yet. And Jay said, look, he's not surprised. Why would he want to be here after what I did to him, after what we did to him? Why would he want to be here? And, of course, this led to CM Punk chants from the crowd. Zayn said, look, we're going to take care of this together no matter what. We had Gunther against The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. You talk about a clash of styles. I was most interested to see how these two would work together here in this match. Michael Cole said that if The Miz won, he would tie Chris Jericho for the highest number of intercontinental title reigns in WWE history. They finally mentioned the guy's name. I thought he was persona non grata. They've avoided mentioning his name through all of this intercontinental stuff, even though he's got like nine of them. So they mentioned Jericho by name. He also said that Gunther has been champion for 533 days. And if you add up all of the Miz's eight title reigns, it amounts to 592 days. Which is kind of sad if you think about that, right? It just puts things into perspective right now as far as this run that Gunther has been on. I've always said I would much rather, if I was a champion, right, even in kayfabe, right, if I was a champion, I would much rather have one long title run than have, like, John Cena and Ric Flair 15, 16 world titles. To me, it's more impressive to have a Gunther-like run oh, thank you. than to just thank constantly you. be winning and losing and winning and losing a title. Oh, thank you. So anyway, he uh, about two more months, and Gunther is going to catch up to the Miz's total number of days as the Intercontinental Champion. Early in the match, Miz wrapped Gunther's knee around the ring post. He applied the old Bret Hart figure four leg lock. I love that spot. And he released it before the referee's count of five. Corey Graves pointed out that Miz was taking a page out of Bret Hart's playbook. Hey, it's a great playbook to steal from. I encourage every wrestler to borrow from Bret Hart's playbook. The greatest playbook you could possibly borrow from. Have at it. Miz came back to the apron. He went for a springboard move, and Gunther booted him out of midair. So then Gunther dominated for a little while. He was toying with him like a cat and a mouse. And then he set him up for a power bomb. Miz threw punches at him, though, took him down with a Hurricane Rana. Miz went back to targeting Gunther's knee. Gunther fired back with a chop. We didn't get enough chops from him here. I was hoping he would chop the shit out of the Miz. We only got a handful of chops. Miz hit a satellite DDT. He covered Gunther for a near fall. Miz set up for a skull-crushing finale. Gunther avoided it, and he put Miz in a sleeper hole. Now, Miz reached for the corner, and in so doing, he pulled off the top turnbuckle pad. Okay? So he pulls it off, and now the referee is kind of distracted. He's in front of the Miz, and he doesn't see the Miz lifts his leg. Now, he kicked Gunther in the knee. I don't know if he was trying to go for a low blow and they redid the spot. I think he meant to kick him in the knee. The referee takes the turnbuckle pad now. He's distracted. Miz turns around. He kicks this fucking guy in the balls. Okay? Kicks Gunther low. Now the crowd is excited. He grabs Gunther and he delivers a skull-crushing finale. And he gets a great near fall out of it. These people in Chicago bought into this. Hook, line, and sinker as a near fall. They actually thought that The Miz was going to beat Gunther and was the new Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> These people bought into God bless them. Bless their hearts. Holy shit. They got them to buy into that as a near fall here in this match. They were shocked when Gunther kicked out. Miz set up for another skull-crushing finale. Gunther countered into another sleeper hold. Miz pulled Gunther into the corner and ducked, which caused Gunther to hit the exposed turnbuckle. And Miz rolled onto Gunther, and he got another near fall out of it. And Corey Graves, very astutely on commentary, pointed out that that was a page out of the Bret Hart playbook, because that's how Bret beat Roddy Piper to win the Intercontinental title of WrestleMania 8. I'm telling you, it's the best playbook there is, the best playbook there was, and the best playbook that there ever will be. I love the fact that Miz paid homage to him twice here in this match. It's too bad he couldn't actually win the fucking match. 
Now, I'm happy he didn't win. I would have been very upset if Miz would have uh, been the one to end this run here on this show. Gunther cut him off with a clothesline. He went up top. He had a flying splash right across Miz's back. It did not look great. And the announcers called it out. Michael Cole said, oh, he didn't get all of it. And Corey Graves pointed out the fact that, well, he couldn't. He, had a la he landed awkwardly because Miz was working over the knee. Now, I don't know if that was by design that it was done that way, that he landed awkwardly, or if it was kind of botched, and that was just Corey Graves saving it, but that was very smart on his part to bring that up. So at that point, we had Gunther rolling Miz over into a Boston Crab. Miz reached for the ropes. Gunther pulled him to the center of the ring. He turned it into a lion tamer, drove his knee into Miz's back, and surprisingly, that caused Miz to tap out quickly. It was very sudden. And that was it. There was no power bomb. There was no, you know, usually you see Gunther win with a power bomb, or I've seen him win matches even with like a hard lariat or something. So this was this was different. And I'll tell you what I really liked about that here in a second. But he got Miz to tap out. The reason I like that, and I'm sure it was done this way on purpose, because this kind of thing doesn't happen by accident. He beat him with the lion tamer. He beat him with Chris Jericho's move which prevented The Miz from tying Chris Look, Jericho everyone, for the most Samoa number bro. of intercontinental title reigns. He beat him with Jericho's move. I like that. I don't know who came up with that idea, but I like it. So Michael Cole played up the idea that Gunther overlooked The Miz, didn't take him seriously, he didn't expect him to put up that much of a fight. Uh, it was a good match that never got to the level of great, uh, but it also felt to me when this was over, even though... Gunther won fair and square, it felt to me like this was the first of at least two. I think we're definitely getting a rematch between these two. I don't know if they're going to drag it out until the Royal Rumble. I mean, I would really like to see them start getting Chad Gable heated up so we can get that eventual rematch, maybe at the Rumble. But it's either the Rumble or a TV between now and then. But I would be very surprised if we don't end up seeing at least one more match between these two. Uh, but it went the way that I thought it would. You know, with Miz, he got some hope spots. He put up a fight. He had a lot of heart. You know, the Miz was fighting from underneath. He was the underdog going into this match. Uh, but in the end, he fell short. Yeah, he showed good aggression coming out of the gate. Figure four around the post. I like that aspect of it. This is the best Miz match in forever. I don't remember the last time Miz had a match this good. And this was not even among the great Gunther matches. <laughs> Like, Gunther could have a match that's just good, and it will still be one of the better matches that his opponent has, has probably had in years, right? That just goes to show you the kind of performer that he is. But uh, I, here's the other thing I like about this, and then we'll move on. I like the fact that Gunther is a heel, but he never cheats. He won clean here. He wins all of his matches clean. It's his opponent. His opponents have to cheat to win. Miz kicked him in the balls. And they still lose. I love it. I love it. All hail Gunther. So they cut to the Judgment Day clubhouse in the back. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, JD McDonough, they're having a conversation. Balor is playing up the idea that this is McDonough's first main roster uh, main event here on a, on a major PLE. Priest said he was proud of him. Dominic showed up and said uh, a dirty birdie told him that Randy Orton was not going to make it tonight. And Balor said that it would either be five on four or Orton would show up and he would poison the other team from within. We had Dragon Lee, one-on-one -on -one with Santos Escobar. Dragon Lee replacing Carlito, who was injured in a storyline angle they shot on SmackDown last night where he was attacked by Escobar. And so Dragon Lee begged Nick Aldis to let him take Carlito's place. I was begging Nick Aldis to let him take Carlito's place. Not because Carlito sucks, but just objectively, you knew it was going to be the better of the two matches. So the minute they made the change, it instantly upgraded the Survivor Series card. And this is one of the matches I was most looking forward to, and I'm sorry to say I was left disappointed. And I can't even blame either of these two guys. But I was disappointed when this was over. And I'll tell you why. Escobar took control early. And he ran Dragon Lee into the ring steps. And he got Lee's right leg wedged in between the steps and the ring. And he was about to 
break his leg the way that he did to Rey Mysterio. But Lee fought out of it, and he was able to escape. Later on in the match, Escobar joined him on the ropes, and he took him over with a Hurricane Rana all the way down to the mat. Got a two count out of it. Escobar started ripping away at Dragon Lee's mask, but he was able to keep it on. See, he should give Penta some lessons. Hey, Red Wolf, welcome to the channel. Good to have you. Take a seat, fix a drink. I got a bowl of crow here if you would like some. He probably has no idea what I'm talking about, but that's okay. So the fans called Escobar an asshole. I mean... This guy came out on television, what was it, a week ago, and he said that he hoped Rey Mysterio got an infection in his leg and had to have his leg amputated. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is hardly the worst thing that this guy has done or said. Escobar brought Lee to the ropes. He set up for a superplex. Dragon Lee fought back. He got Escobar in a tree of woe before double stomping him. After Escobar recovered, in comes Dragon Lee. He charges in, gets caught with a super kick. And both men traded knee strikes. Dragon Lee tried for a power bomb. Initially, he couldn't get Escobar up. He was kind of dropping him, and then he muscled him up, and he was able to hit a sit-out power bomb for two. Lee went for a move that Escobar countered into a destroyer. He followed that with the Phantom Driver, and he scored the clean pin in only eight minutes. This went, this went I, it might have been less. It might have been like seven and a half. But by my count, this went about eight minutes, this match. So when I told you that I was left disappointed, it wasn't anything that Santos Escobar did, and it wasn't anything that Dragon Lee did wrong. They were having a good match, and then it just ended. And they couldn't even give these guys ten minutes on a show that had only five matches. Even if you factor in the length of the War Games main event, the punk thing at the end, like, there was still time. You couldn't give these guys another five minutes. It felt like they just never got into that second gear. They were they were getting there, and but it just ended. And I just think on a show that has five matches, you know, you you can find five more minutes to give these two guys. That was my biggest gripe with this. This could have been so much better than it was. And I'm hoping that they have a chance to run this back again. That's my hope. That we have not seen the last of this. That they don't just move on to Carlito, who they said in storyline is going to be back in a few weeks. So we will end up getting Escobar and Carlito, and, and, you know, that might end up being good. But hopefully we get to see this again at some point. But, you know, again, it felt like Escobar dominated the majority of the match, which he should have. You know, I, I get it. They're trying to heat him up as a heel. They're getting him ready for Rey Mysterio in a big WrestleMania match. So they did what they had to do. I still think five more minutes wouldn't have killed him. That's all. We had Rhea Ripley against Zoe Stark. For the Women's World Championship. Zoe was supposed to be the baby face here. <laughs> These people were having none of it. These people were all about Rhea Ripley. They're chanting mommy. Which is just, if you think about it, it's just ridiculous when you hear them chanting that. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. But they love Rhea Ripley. They didn't give a shit about Zoe Stark. Zoe dropped kick Ripley out of the ring to kick things off, and she put Rhea back inside. She went to go hit her with a missile drop kick and got a two count out of it. Zoe set up, set up for a springboard move, got dropped by a headbutt, and then Rhea was setting up for a move on the apron. She ended up getting dumped on her head with a DDT. So after this, Ripley dominated for a while. There was a, an awkward spot where it looked like Rhea was going to choke slam Zoe uh, off the top. And Zoe tried to land on her feet. She didn't. Uh, she got up. She ended up dropping Rhea with a kick, and she covered her for a two count. For the finish, Rhea went for Riptide. Zoe was able to counter out of it into a suplex. Zoe went for her Z360 finish, but Ripley stuffed it, and then she elbowed Zoe a few times in the side of the head, and she was finally able to put her away with Riptide for the win. This had no heat. People like Rhea, but the match had no heat. The announcers, they went with the narrative here at the end. I think it was Michael Cole on commentary who went with the narrative that, oh, Zoe put up this great fight. She put up this great fight. Did she? Did she? Because watching this, I don't think it was that great. What was so great about the fight that she put up? 
even you know the near falls that there were had no heat. You know, she was out there trying, uh, but at no point did it feel like Rhea or her title were in any kind of real jeopardy. Uh, I thought the match itself, I would say the match was decent, but it never rose to the level of what you would think a world championship match on a, on a big pay-per-view would be. Um, there were two issues at play here in this match. For one, Zoe just isn't over. She's very talented. You know, I could see that back when she was in NXT. She's very talented, and they tried by pairing her off with Trish Stratus. They said, okay, maybe by pairing her off with Trish and working with Becky, right? In theory, what a, what a great idea. And she'll get the exposure, she'll get the rub, so to speak, and it'll help her get over. It has not helped her get over. I don't fault them for trying, but it has not helped her get over. The problem is they need to create new stars. They're doing what they need to be doing. We should want to be seeing people like Zoe Stark getting opportunities like this. The problem is not everybody is going to get over. The fans don't make that connection with everybody, or they don't make that connection as quickly as sometimes WWE would like for them to. And it's very clear that Zoe is, she may get there at some point, but she's not there yet. So you throw her out there, she's, she's a fine body to put out there in the meantime for Rhea to beat. But you can't expect that the people are going to just be rallying behind her. She was a heel up until like a month ago. <laughs> she never really did anything to turn babyface. She never really did anything to get the people behind her. She was a heel. And then she beat up Trish. Or slapped her, whatever. Well, she gave her her finish at the end of the cage match. So that's problem number one. Zoe just isn't over. Uh, the other issue is that the fans love Rhea Ripley. The fans love Rhea Ripley, and what they want is they want somebody to go in there and be a credible challenger for Rhea Ripley to defend her world championship against. Zoe Stark does not have the credibility to be that person. The problem is there's nobody outside of Becky Lynch, because that's going to be the WrestleMania match. The WrestleMania match should be Rhea Ripley against Becky Lynch in Philadelphia next year. If you look at the Monday Night Raw roster, look, take a look at the women that are on the Raw roster right now, outside of Becky and Rhea. They don't have a lot of good options. They don't have any options, okay? They don't. They've run through Raquel. They've run through Zoe. God help us if it's Nia Jax, okay? Put that on the side. What are you left with? Zia Lee. Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell. I said Triple H has a lot of work to do to rehab that women's division. Rome was not built in a day or a month. But they have to find people for her to work with between now and WrestleMania. We still have time between now and WrestleMania. Who is she going to defend against at the Royal Rumble? Who is she going to defend against in Australia at the Elimination Chamber? You know she's going to have a big presence on that show. I don't see what options are there for Rhea Ripley right now. Is there anybody that you want to see her in the ring with outside of maybe Becky Lynch? Because that's the biggest marquee match they can do. Who is that person that's on the Raw roster right now? I would love to know. I don't know who that person is. That's the other problem. So those are the two issues that are uh, facing them right now as far as the women's division is concerned on Monday Night Raw. Shout out to the 3,700 plus hanging out with me here for this uh, Survivor Series review. Keep smashing that like button. I love to see that. We're getting close here to the main event. You know, Jade Cargill. Oh boy. Oh no. It's the pyro bomb from Cody. Oh my god. Oh god. This fucker has a lot of pyro, doesn't he? <laughs> he really does. The Cody Bomb, that was JM. That was JM. Hey, King Jack, shout out to King Jack. Happy CM Punk Day, he says. It may be midnight in your time zone, but it is still CM Punk Day in Chicago. Have yourself an ice cream bar on me. Hey, JM, thank you for the $300 bomb. Amazing as always. Holy shit. Man. Man, we are rocking. We are rocking tonight, aren't we? 
the, the punk parties are out in full force. What I was going to say is somebody mentioned Jade Cargill. We still don't know where Jade is going to land. It was rumored that she was going to end up on Raw. Going into Jade Cargill and Rhea Ripley, though, for the title of WrestleMania that quickly? Eh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that would be a mistake. To just jump into it like that? I think they probably are saving Jade for the Royal Rumble. I think we'll see Jade in the... That'll probably be her debut in the ring. We'll be in the Women's Royal Rumble. And could she win? Of course. If they want her to debut in the Royal Rumble, it could be that she's going to win the entire thing. I think that's too much too soon. I really do. I think that would be a mistake. Um, but yeah, you want to put her on the list, you can put her on the list. She's just she's not on the Raw roster yet. So that's why I say Becky is the only realistic option right now. But yeah, Jade, Jade is still hanging out there, so Jade is certainly uh, a possibility. You can't discount that as a possibility. Seth Rollins was backstage. He was very stressed out because he had gotten wind that CM Punk might be at the building, and he was very upset. He was stressed out because there's no Randy Orton. And he wants to know what's going on. Is he going to show up or not? And Jey Uso said, oh, it's all my fault that he's not here. And Cody said, look, guys, don't worry. Trust me. He'll be here. I got it. It's all taken care of. He'll be here. Don't worry about it. And Seth said, okay, I hope so. Because we're going to war. Because coming up next was indeed... The men's war games match. When you hear the sirens, you know exactly what's coming up next. It's our main event. It is the men's war games match with the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, JD McDonough against Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and the returning Randy Orton for the first time in 18 months. Randy Orton, supposed to be out there with his team. Randy Orton, though, nowhere to be found. Randy Orton was not out there. Drew McIntyre came out first. And then all the other members of the Judgment Day entered. McIntyre went nose-to-nose -nose with Damian Priest. They do not like each other. So they were staring each other down. Probably for a good two minutes. They just stood there staring at each other. While Finn Balor made his way down to the ring to start things out for the Judgment Day. After all, the baby faces came out, except for Randy Orton. They got in their shark cage, and it was Seth Rollins who started things out for his team. We did get CM Punk chance early in this match. People were still hopeful that he was going to be there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Cody just got an entrance. My God, they just blew the budget on this. How are they going to pay CM Punk if they're if they're paying for Cody's pyro? I do like how you timed that, though. Cody just made his entrance here for this match, and now he got the pyro entrance. ABK with the 400. Is that is that right? Am I looking at that right? I think I am looking at that right. That is a $411 Cody bomb. We hit pay dirt here tonight. Holy Crap. ABK always be killing it. I'm very happy to see him joining us here tonight. And Boredom Strikes just became a channel member. No boredom here on this channel. You can go find those other channels. You want to get bored. You want, you want bored. Go find those channels. Keep it right here. You never know what's going to happen. By the way, we got a ton of new channel members as well. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Silver Tower again before with 50 gifted memberships. He might have even done more. I'll have to go back after and see. Everybody gifting memberships to people. It is the holiday season. Uh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. We are uh, climbing the ranks with our channel members, so thank you. Don't forget you got those custom emojis in the chat if you're a channel member. So, Rollins and Balor. They kicked us off here in the men's War Games match. Rollins set up for a pedigree on the metal grate in between both rings that separated the two. Balor backdropped him, and Rollins landed on his badly broken back that they love to talk about. He's got the fractured back, yet apparently he just keeps wrestling. His back can't be that bad if he's still wrestling every single week. Randy Orton just missed 18 months with a bad back. So it's kind of weird. 
that Seth Rollins has a fractured back and he doesn't miss a single day. Randy Orton has a bad back. He missed 18 months. What does that say about Randy Orton? So JD McDonough, he was in next. Hey, <laughs> Silver Tower, oh my God. 50 more. You can add 50 more to the list. Look at this. Look at this list. Look at the sea of green that we have here. Silver Tower. I'm going to have to build him a new tower. It's going to be a gold tower. We're not going to need the silver anymore. It's going to be gold. 24 karat gold. On me. JD McDonough was in next after the initial three minute period expired. And he brought a pair of kendo sticks into the ring. He and Balor were working over Rollins with them until Rollins got some help from Jay Uso. Was in next for the baby faces. Yeet! Every time he threw a kick, every time he threw a punch, the fans were saying yeet. So if he punched, they said yeet. If he kicked, they said yeet. If he sneezed, they said yeet. It's amazing. So McDonough cut off his momentum with a standing Spanish fly, but uh, Uso and Rollins, they made a comeback very quickly. The heels got the next man in, and it was going to be Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre was going to be the next man in. But Priest stopped him and said, got to stick to the plan. And McIntyre told him, the plans have just changed, haven't they? And Priest told him, not my plan. Trust me. So. That was very interesting. A little interesting comment there. So you knew something was brewing. You knew something was about to happen. Priest made his way down to the cage. We got more CM Punk chance. Priest suplexed Jay. Then he hit a, an elevated flatliner to Seth Rollins. Rudy, welcome to the channel, Rudy. Get that thumbs up from Orange Cassidy. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I read Orange Cassidy is almost 40. I, I'm, I was shocked by this. For some reason, I thought he was closer to 30. The, guy, the guy's like almost my age. <laughs> I didn't think he was that old. It's amazing. So Damian Priest, of all people, hit a version of the Jeff Hardy whisper in the wind. He, he used the cage. He climbed to the top rope. He went to the middle part of the top rope. And he did a little uh, whisper in the wind. And he took down the baby faces. So then we got the countdown. Babyface's turn to send a man in. They open the door. Cody looks at Sammy. Sammy looks at Cody. They shake hands. Sammy Zayn's going to come to the ring next. So he went under the ring. He pulled out a table to what was, up to this point, the second biggest pop. Of Little did we know what was coming. But the uh, second biggest pop of the night. Second only to... Somebody says, he is your age, you're him. Oh. Don't give away the secret. Don't give away the secret. Come on, man. Second only to the first pop that the table got in the women's war games match. So he took down Damian Priest. Blue Thunder Bomb to Finn Balor. He was about to climb to the top of the cage, but McDonough stopped him. And McDonough then got crotched on the top rope. Sammy then pulled a pipe out of, I guess it was wedged into part of the cage. So he pulled out the pipe. And he used it as a weapon. He took down Damian Priest with it. So then up next, Drew McIntyre was uncaged. He was released from the shark cage, and he had his eyes on one man. That man was the man who wronged him. The man who wronged him last year and never apologized to him. Although, I'm a little confused here. So, he holds Jey Uso responsible for what happened to him. I could have sworn that it was Solo Sokoa, technically, who cost him the championship at Clash of the Castle. So why is he so upset with Jey Uso? He should be upset with Solo Sokoa. But he's directing all of his rage and anger at Jey Uso. So he gets into the cage, and this is what Rhea Ripley promised him. He said this is why he agreed to be with the Judgment Day in this match. He said Rhea Ripley promised me one thing, Jey Uso in a cage. Oh my God, the Judgment Day has interrupted my stream again. <laughs> they were doing this constantly the other night, these fuckers. It's all they do. You hear their music on the show every week. They're constantly interrupting people. 
Why should I be any different? Hey, Ian. Ian Noel Camelotes, thank you for the 32 bucks. Fucking judgment day. Ridiculous. So they went at it. Jay came at him. McIntyre took him down with a neck breaker and then drove him face first into the cage. He told Jay to acknowledge what the hell he did. I'm wondering, what did he do? What did he do? It is. It's guilt by association. Bones Jones. That's right. It's guilt by association. Jay Uso did not cost this man the title in Cardiff last year. He should mosey on over to SmackDown. Apparently anybody can do that. Cody Rhodes went to SmackDown last week. Nobody stopped him. Guilt by association. It's ridiculous. He lawn darted Jay into the cage. He went for a Claymore kick. That got thwarted, and uh, Jay and Sammy delivered a 1D to Drew McIntyre. Now we've got a countdown. And here comes Cody Rhodes. The man whose father was the, this was his brainchild. War Games was the brainchild of the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. And for the first time in his career, Cody is now in a War Games match. So it's appropriate that Cody brought a bull rope into the cage. He and Rollins, Rollins grabbed the other end of it. And it looked like Rollins was contemplating attacking Cody. All of a sudden, he had an issue with Cody Rhodes. I thought they put their differences aside. I thought, didn't they agree on Raw last week for one night only they would be on the same page? Now they're running the same angle here that they did earlier in the night with Charlotte and Becky. So Cody is talking to him and says, look, one night. One night only. And Rollins says, okay, we'll work together. One night only. And they agreed to work together. They used the bull rope. Rollins started yelling at him about Randy Orton, though. He's demanding to know, is he coming? So Dominic Mysterio was the last man out of the shark cage for the Judgment Day. Michael Cole said that's the longest that Dom has actually been behind bars in his entire life. So Dominic hit the three amigos to cut, well, two of the amigos. He went for a third amigo. He didn't get it, though, because when he stood up, he was surrounded by the baby faces, and they all beat him down. Rollins and Sammy took the table. That was in the ring. They propped it up in the corner up against the turnbuckles. Rollins was going to give Dominic a buckle bomb through the table, but the heels, they put a stop to that. So now we're getting chance of Randy. Randy. Then we get chance of CM Punk. CM Punk. <laughs> Again, these people, I know they were chanting for it, but I'm not convinced that the majority of these people actually were expecting that they were going to get what they were about to get. So we got a triple choke slam spot from Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre. They dropped Cody, Jay, and Sammy. No, I'm sorry. They dropped Rollins, Cody, and Sammy. JD McDonough hit a moonsault. Balor hit a double stomp off the top. Dominic hit a frog spot. I mean, they're just hitting all their finishes on all the baby faces. The baby faces are in peril. They're in the danger zone. Things are not looking good for them. So the heels stood tall. And the countdown begins. Get the little countdown clock on screen. And the countdown hit zero. No Randy Orton. Crowd starts to boo. Instead, though, we got Rhea Ripley's music. And here comes Rhea Ripley with the money in the bank briefcase and a referee. And she is... So this is the plan that Damian Priest was talking about earlier when he told Drew McIntyre there's a plan. Stick to the plan. So now she's racing down to the ring. She's got the case. She's got the referee. And then all of a sudden, we hear voices. Well, I always hear voices. But we hear the music, the song. We hear voices. And the Allstate Arena in Chicago explodes. And for the first time in 18 months, here comes Randy Orton. And he's all suited up in his regular gear for combat he's looking yoked he's i mean he's in better shape than he was the last time we saw him on tv which makes sense if he was dealing with a bad back that he's been getting himself in shape but he looked fantastic and the people lost their minds for him he looked happy to be there you know he he does these weird movements right he, he's walking down to the ring and he's like he's like moving around he's like you know he looked drunk when he was walking down to the ring but he was, he was just, he was feeling it. You know, he was in the moment. You could tell. This was a big moment for him. Doctors told him he should not come back. 
He was told by his doctors that he should retire, that he should never step back in the ring again. That's what his father said. That's what Cowboy Bob Orton has said. That the doctor said, don't come back. Maybe in his mind, he th- maybe he's on borrowed time. I don't know. But nobody looked happier to be back out there tonight or to see Randy Orton than Randy Orton himself to be back out there in front of that crowd. So he got a monster pop. And he gets into the cage. And, of course, we get the announcement, let the war games begin. Now the match kind of, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I just sat through a 20-minute match. You're telling me now it's about to begin? So now the match can officially begin. And Orton goes nuts. It's a snap power slam to Dominic. He gives one to J.D. McDonough. He gives a draping DDT to Finn Balor. He's feeling it. He's in the zone, right? He is fucking ready. Orton and McIntyre, they lock eyes, right? We get holy shit chants from the crowd. They circle one another like prey. And we got a little bit of a slugfest before Damian Priest came over to break it up. He attacked Orton from behind. And now all the heels are putting the boots to Randy Orton in the corner. It's a gang attack. Until the baby faces, they reemerge and they come over. We got a five-way draping DDT spot. Between the two rings in the center of the ring, they all got members of the Judgment Day and McIntyre set up for draping DDTs. And they hit them in stereo at the same time. That was fucking cool. That was a great spot. So now Orton drops down. He drops down. You know what that means. He's setting up, he's setting up for it. He shouldn't be doing this very often. Not, not if he had the bad back. <laughs> I said this last night on the SmackDown stream. I think it would be in his best interest to reserve the RKO for special occasions and maybe use the punt kick. Be a lot easier on his body. But you knew we were going to get RKOs on this show. I mean, it's his first time in 18 months. You got to use the RKO. So he's setting up for it. But then he turns away from the heels and he turns towards Jey Uso. And the crowd's, oh, the crowd reacts to that like, oh, shit, right? So now he's slithering over to Jey Uso. Jey Uso locks eyes with him. And he's banging the mat. Orton's telling him, I haven't forgotten. So then Damian Priest is coming in. To attack Randy Orton, Jey Uso intercepts Damian Priest. He saves Randy Orton. And Randy Orton then hits an RKO to Dominic. The crowd explodes. Rollins hits the curb stomp on Damian Priest on the diamond plate in between the two rings. Cody hits a Cody cutter. I didn't see to who. Sammy hit the Huluva kick. I believe it was to Finn Balor. Jey Uso comes off the top rope and hits an Uso splash to Drew McIntyre. J.D. McDonough was left all by himself. And J.D. McFunko head, he begins to scale the cage. He's trying to escape, which again, you can't do that because your team will be eliminated if you climb out of the cage. So he's scaling the cage. Sammy and Seth, they chase him up to the top of the cage. And they meet him at the top. And they're beating the crap out of him while they're sitting on top of this cage. Randy Orton is down below. And Randy Orton looks up, and he's, he's getting ready, right? You can see, I'm having flashbacks to, you know, Evan Bourne and the uh, 450 splash into the RKO on Raw many years ago, right? He's setting up for something. Rollins and Sammy, they look down at Orton, right? Now they're all in sync together. They grab J.D. McDonough, and they throw him off the top of the cage into a perfectly timed RKO. Randy Orton hits the RKO on the... He didn't have to do anything except just drop down. McDonough just sort of... The momentum fell into Randy Orton, but it looked great, right? Great spot. And honestly, the spot that should have ended the match, but I get why they didn't end with that, uh, because Orton wanted to hand him off to Cody Rhodes. And on commentary, they were even saying, like, oh, it's like Orton telling Cody, this is your time now. It's like he's passing the torch. This is your moment, right? Here, this is you now. And he gives, uh, well, it was Damian Priest, actually, who gets handed off to Cody. And Cody hits Priest with one crossroads, and he pins him to win the match for his team. So the baby faces prevail here in War Games. And after the match, Rollins and Sammy go over, and they hug Randy Orton. They're all smiles, and they're all hugging each other. And the baby faces are all lined up in a row. And they're raising their arms. And Triple H did something that he did a lot 
in NXT back during the black and gold era. If you used to watch those old takeover shows, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When he used to go ahead and put the copyright box in the lower corner of the screen, and he would fool you into believing that the show was over, right? They're about to go off the air. How many times have we seen him do that at the end of a takeover show? And then he gets you because, oh, here comes Tommaso Ciampa to attack Johnny Gargano from behind, or here comes, you know, someone's theme music plays and they make their debut or they make their return, right? He got us again. He got it. He got me. He got us again on this show because it looks like they're about to go off the air. And just as it looks like we're going off, cult of personality hits. You're living color and Chicago. I'm surprised that the entire building did not come crumbling down. I'm, I'm shocked that the, the Allstate Arena did not crumble to its very foundation. You know what's, what's odd now that I look back on this now? If you remember the entrance that CM Punk made, his last entrance ever in AEW, a few months ago at All In, the, the tunnel that he came out from was very similar to the one that they had here for Survivor Series tonight. Because it wasn't the traditional you know, LED set that WWE uses. So as I watched him walk out through that little tunnel, it was weird. Like, I had this feeling of deja vu. Like, it took me back to Wembley Stadium, watching him walk out for that final entrance. But there he was. And, you know, I will say, it's only been a couple of months since uh, he got fired, but I said Randy Orton, right? Obviously, he's been working out. He got himself in great shape. Punk also looked like he's been working out. He looked a little bit bigger than the last time we saw him. And he shaved, he got a, you know, he grew his hair out a little bit, but there is CM Punk in his street clothes. He walks out. Everybody is losing their minds because even though they were chanting his name all night long, I don't think that most people in the building by that point of the night honestly expected it. But Triple H heard those chants, and Triple H knew going into this pay per view that they were going to be showered by chants of CM Punk in Chicago. And WWE officials denied it to, you know, the Meltzers and the Saps and Mike Johnson and everybody else, right? No, there's nothing going on. There were rumors about meetings with Punk and management, and it was always denied, or there was no confirmation of anything. But I give Triple H a lot of credit, because he was able to keep this very close to the vest. And even though you knew in the back of your mind it was a possibility, like, you couldn't 100% discount that it might happen because they're in Chicago. He's a free agent, right? Anything can happen. Never say never in wrestling. Tonight is a great example of that. I didn't think it was going to happen. When I heard the music hit and I, I saw him walk out and it became real all of a sudden, I thought, man, I couldn't remember the last time that they got me with a genuine surprise. Everything leaks. Everything is talked about and rumored and discussed on social media. You know, me doing what I do as a content creator and as a podcaster, I need to be aware of these things. I need to be aware of the rumors and sometimes spoilers and stuff, even if I don't want to be, right? There are just certain things I need to be up on. I need to know what's going on if I'm going to talk about it and discuss it. So I will intentionally spoil certain surprises for myself. And I know that it, it ruins the enjoyment for me of certain things. I know that. And there are times where I wish I didn't have to know any of that stuff and I could just go into a show clean. You know, like, like a normal fan, like a normal person. But they got me. And I can't remember the last time they did that. I give them a lot of credit for that. They were able to keep this very, very close to the vest. They muddied the water. You know, Punk with all of his Instagram stories and everything, he muddied the waters just enough. Even though he was teasing it, it was almost like he was teasing it a little too much to where it's like, all right, he's not going to be there. You know, and then boom, there he is. He walks out. And now all of a sudden, as we go into the Royal Rumble, we go into WrestleMania, everything has been blown to smithereens. Everything has been blown wide open now. And everything we thought was going to happen at WrestleMania now, everything's up in the air. The one thing I hope, the one thing I sincerely, genuinely hope, is that because CM Punk is back, that does not disrupt the plans they have for Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. That would be a fucking shame if bringing him back to the company were to somehow interfere with that story going into Philadelphia next year. That story should remain untouched. You want to do something with CM Punk? Do that on night one. You want to have CM Punk wrestle for a world championship? Have him wrestle Seth Rollins. And frankly, I'm not even sure that's the match that I would, I would do. 
because I think there are, there are other matches as well that they could be doing with people they already have on the roster. But I could see where doing Rollins and Punk would be very appealing. And if Rollins is the World Heavyweight Champion, then it would be for the World Heavyweight title. There is value in having CM Punk at a feature main event match on one of the nights of WrestleMania. It might be too much for them not to do. Seth and Punk is probably, as we sit here right now, the most obvious, the most likely match for him at WrestleMania 4. Because whatever other match you could do with CM Punk, I don't know that any of them are going to have the level of juice that that one could have. And I think it could be a very good match. There's another issue with Punk, though. It became a problem in AEW. Forget the backstage stuff for a second. He suffered two very serious injuries in a relatively short period of time. And both of them were freak accidents, but they still happened. You know, he dove into the crowd and he shattered his foot and he ruined all of the summer plans that Tony Khan had for him and for whatever else was going to be going on. Everything blew up because he broke his foot. When he came back, he wrestled John Moxley, and not very long into their match at All Out, he tore his tricep. And if Brawl Out had not happened, he would have been gone anyway for nine months. That's a very serious injury. That's two very serious injuries back to back. Punk is what? What is Punk now? Punk is what? 45, I think? He's in his mid 40s, I know, at this point. I'm sitting next to Cody Rose, man. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> That was from the last press uh, conference, not the one tonight. That was the one from Fastlane. That's a classic. But now CM Punk is in his mid-40s, right? He's not as young as he used to be. That's two major injuries back-to-back in AEW. That's the other question we now have to ask ourselves now that he's back in WWE. Can his body hold up? Physically, can his body hold up to the rigors of a WWE schedule? Is he going to be working a full-time WWE schedule? Should he be working a full-time WWE schedule? Do you feel him, sir? I do. <laughs> I do feel him. That was also from that press conference, by the way. Uh, so there's a lot of questions when it comes to CM Punk. You know, but the one that I think has to be addressed is, can his body hold up to a full-time and have just a handful of big matches each year? Or... Maybe he's going to be in the spot that Edge was in. Edge was not a full-time guy. Edge wanted to be. That's why he went to AEW. He said WWE did not have a role for him. He wanted to work more of a full-time schedule. That's why he went to go sign with Tony Khan. So what kind of schedule is CM Punk going to be on? I mean, I feel like they have enough part-time guys as it is. We have two champions on SmackDown right now that are part-time. You'll notice two people who are not on the show tonight, Roman Reigns and Logan Paul. Do we need another part-time act? You know, Brock Lesnar is going to be coming back for WrestleMania. Maybe the match is Brock Lesnar and CM Punk, part two, right? They had a great match at SummerSlam 10 years ago. I don't think Punk's body would hold up to a Brock Lesnar match. So there are a lot of questions that have to be answered as far as CM Punk, his future, what his schedule is and what he will be doing at WrestleMania. But instantly, Punk rockets to the top of the list. He's got to be one of the top two or three picks now to win the Men's Royal Rumble in Tampa in January. Again, it just it upends everything. It changes everything. And my only hope is that we don't start hearing about problems that are going on behind the scenes and drama. The last thing WWE needs is drama. I didn't want there to be drama with CM Punk in AEW. When CM Punk first came into AEW, I was as excited as anybody else. I wasn't against it. I was looking forward to seeing Punk back for the first time in seven years. Are you fucking kidding me? When he came out at the, at the United Center for that first rampage? I mean, it was a reaction the likes of which I don't think I've heard anything like that. Not since the days of Austin. It was an amazing moment. Tony Khan had gold, and he got CM Punk to come back. That was a big deal for AEW. And it's sad. The way that everything blew up, the way that it did. It never should have happened that way. Punk now has a chance to come back and put that in the rear view. And fix the mistakes that were made. So instead of going out in disgrace, 
he now gets to write the final chapter of his story. He gets to make amends, he gets to end the story the way that he wants to and be the hero instead of the villain. That's what he has the chance to do now. For his sake, I hope he can do it. We'll see. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out and what the reaction is from the other people who maybe didn't know that he was coming in. Well, now he's back. And he's taking a spot from someone. We don't know who, but he's clearly going to take a spot from somebody. They can't be happy about that, but we'll see. You're going to be hearing a lot as well, I'm sure, about reactions from the AEW camp. I'm also very, very curious to hear what the reaction is from people on the AEW side. But there are going to be a lot of people mocking AEW and, you know, talking about Tony Khan making a mistake and everything. And I, again, I still feel like Tony Khan did the right thing. Even though now he's looking at this and probably saying, man, you know, what, what could have been, he made the right decision. Given the circumstances, he made the only decision that he could make. And it sucks for AEW, but they did what they had to do. In the process, WWE got a major name back and certainly... This is going to be the talk of the town for a while. We'll have a lot to talk about, though, that's for sure. That's how they went off the air. Punk was celebrating with fans in the front row. They went off the air. One of the best cliffhangers in company history. And again, find me a bigger Survivor Series ending and a more talked about or controversial one outside of Montreal in 97. This is it right here. This is number two on the list now. Let's take a look at the uh, Twitter poll. Let's see now what you guys thought of this show. We have almost 2,500 votes in. And this Survivor Series show has 90% thumbs up so far. Oh, third time. Look at this. This is for all the punk fans out there. Want to celebrate the uh, the great news that I'm sure they are celebrating in the streets right now. We're having a party here on the street. We're Barry Horowitz now. Where is it? Silver Tower with a $289 bomb says, take my money. This is a great day. Well, I can tell who's in a great mood right now. Silver Tower is in a fantastic mood right now. Silver Tower, thank you very much. I do wonder if Punk had not walked out, if they did not hit Punk's music at the end of the show, and if he didn't walk out, would that thumbs up number be 90%? Probably not. So it is, ama it is amazing, though. Uh, what is this? Did you see footage of Rollins cussing out Punk as his... Oh, is it starting already? Is the drama starting already? <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, man. I I just hope I just hope for Triple H's sake that he knows what he's doing. I hope for his sake he knows what he's doing and he made the right move because yes, apparently there's video of, of Seth Rollins being pissed. Seth walking out pissed that CM Punk was back. Look, you can't discount the thing that it's a work. I just told you who the likely opponent is for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. It's CM Punk. So who's to say that that's not all part of the work here? I haven't seen the video, so it might be obvious that it's a work. I don't know. I'm just, apparently there is a video out there. He looked pissed. Fightful is saying that at least one talent was legitimately upset. This is, again, this is the situation that you find yourself in. When you bring in somebody like this who has a reputation as a malcontent, and you, you, pull the pin out of the grenade and you roll the grenade into the locker room here. You know, I mean, it's going to go off at some point. You don't hear about a lot of problems and drama in the WWE locker room. So again, you, you got to have people who are upset about this. Well, they're going to have to learn to live with it because he's back. He's back and he's not going anywhere right now. So they're going to have to work with him or they're just going to have to learn to deal with it. But yeah, obviously, they weighed the pros and cons, and they decided that it was worth it to bring him back to surprise people and, and do business with him and make money with him. 
I, I am curious if Vince McMahon had any say in this because he's been kind of shuffled into the background, but he's been shuffled into the background creatively. Doesn't mean that he's still not making decisions as far as bringing this person in, not bringing that person in. You know, he still has power in this company. You know, people made a big deal about him selling shares of stock. So he went from owning 16% of the stock to 12%. Like, whoopty fucking do. Like, he's still there. So I wonder how much influence, if any, he had over that decision on the punk stuff. I don't know. We'll have to see. One thing before I uh, get into your uh, messages here. I did mention that we have a contest. So let's knock this out real quick here. Let's knock this out because I know we got some people here who are waiting with the bated breath to find out if they will win because we got a contest to do. It is the Wrestle Rumble contest. And we are giving away one grand prize, and that grand prize is the Macho Man Randy Savage Legacy Championship Belt. This thing, by the way, I, I don't have it in my possession. Wrestle Rumble does. It is a monstrosity. It's in a 40-pound box. So you you want a belt. This is a belt. I'm telling you right now. So just to show you here, we have uh, close to 1,000 entries. And uh, there are some multiple ones. Again, you could enter multiple times. I am simply going to jumble up the list. We're going to pick one winner at random. It will be the person who is on the list in the number one spot. So it's going to be a numbered list. Whoever is listed at number one, that is going to be the grand prize winner. That's it. We're only picking one. Simple as that. Ready? Sounds good to me. Here we go. The winner of the Madness Contest for Wrestle Rumble is Ed Anarumo. Ed Anarumo is the winner of the Macho Man Randy Savage Legacy Championship Belt. Ed, congratulations, brother. Wrestle Rumble will be in contact with you. I, look, I'm just the master of ceremonies here. Wrestle Rumble will be in touch, and he will make sure he gets that belt out to you. Knowing Wrestle Rumble, it will very likely be in the next 24 hours. So congratulations to Ed. That is very cool. And uh, do take pictures of your belt. And tweet them out to me at Wrestle Rumble and let us know when you get it. Oh boy, a lot of people talking about that. I gotta, I gotta watch the Seth video now. Everyone's talking about this Seth video. Probably a work. Although I, I'm sure Seth Rollins is not thrilled at the idea of having to work with CM Punk. Again. I did always get the sense that he genuinely did not like him. But thank you. Thank you, in A zero point, but thank, thank you. you. In thank you, in but Rollins is a professional, and I'm sure that Rollins will will do whatever needs to be done. If he has to work with Punk, he'll work with Punk. Punk already tweeted back to Riddle. Oh my, what is going on? Is there already drama? The guy has been back in the company for what, two hours and there's already drama going on? Unbelievable. Well, look, you get what you pay for. And if things go south, you can't say the WWE didn't know what they were getting themselves into. This is what you call risk reward. You take the good with the bad and the chips fall where they will. Why, why would he be tweeting Riddle, though? Did Riddle say something about CM Punk? Uh, Josh Carlos. Oh, man. We're going back five. Oh, boy. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got a lot to get through here. Holy shit. All right, we're going to get through these. We are going to get through these. Uh, Josh Carlos says, am I interested in the Von Erich uh, biopic? Uh, yes, I, pro I probably will end up seeing it. Comes out December 22nd. Uh, Wild Bird. Might as well get it out of your system with this question. Ruffle Shuffle, the Truffle Shuffle, or the Super Bowl Shuffle. It's 
too late to be talking about shuffles. How about shuffleboard? How about that? Now, you got to go with the truffle shuffle. I'm a Goonies guy, so truffle shuffle gets my vote. Winter's Paw. Miz is a Hall of Famer for a reason. Nerds can cry about it. Are there people who think Miz is not going into the Hall of Fame? I mean, how stupid can you be? Are there people who really think Miz does not belong in the Hall of Fame? He also says, happy that Bailey is going to get this spotlight heading into WrestleMania season. Uh, she always took the backseat for other people. Now it is finally her turn. Yeah, I'm happy for her. It was always, Charlotte always gets the spotlight. Becky gets the spotlight. Sasha you know, gets a lot of love. And Bailey is always sort of like the fourth in line. Uh, Booba says, it's nuts how much better Dominic has gotten, not just in the past year. Last year, he had no confidence. Now he seems a lot more comfortable and has a swagger. That's because he gets to hang out with Rhea Ripley every night. You'd have a lot more confidence, too. Gregory, R-Truth's biggest return of the night. R-Truth against Roman on night two of WrestleMania. Much love and respect to you, Solomon. So, hey, Gregory, thank you. Man. Trail Mexican, so November 25th, 2023. I'm back as a superstar. Hope he doesn't stage dive and get injured again. Here's seven bucks. Hope Pepsi Man still bans me. But don't worry, we're going to keep the $7 uh, CM Punk has banned you from Collision Super Chat. That was a little provision in his contract, in his exit, that he can still ban people from Collision. Uh, the Yatsugaratsu says, wow. I'm actually surprised, if only because I wonder if Randy Orton is okay with coming back after a year and a half to have his return completely overshadowed by Punk's return after a decade. It, it is it is too bad. I mean, again, Orton, Orton came back, and it's a big deal to have him back, but nobody's going to be talking about that tomorrow. Dethronic. Holy shit, bruh. I can't believe this. We got R-Truth back. See, I told you, there are people who are very happy that R-Truth is back. Oh, uh, we got... God of Seduction, Randy's return was a smokescreen. They got us all. Well, I don't know if they got everybody. They got me, though. You know, I admit, I didn't think it was going to happen. So, they definitely got me. But there were people who were convinced he was going to be on the show. Like, you could not, you could not say otherwise. They were convinced that he was going to be there no matter what. And they turned out to be right. Chris O'Neill, CM goes after Rollins, I think. I think you're right. Or Wizzle. I'm in shock. Could be toxic. Hopefully not, though. Which War Games match did you think was better overall? CM Punk against Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40? Why not? The Survivor Series video recap at the end was dope. Honestly, I, I wasn't even paying attention to it. I was so shell-shocked by what just happened and trying to get my notes finished that I didn't even see the closing video. I'll have to go back and watch it. Uh, of the two War Games matches, I I enjoyed both of them, but I would go with the men's. Uh, crypto and Poker. Is Punk the uh, is Punk to Raw the reason that Kevin Owens went to SmackDown? I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Uh, Drew McIncock. It's clobbering time. Uh, Chris Perry, not a big punk fan, but they signed a guy that Tony Khan said made him fear for his life. The promos should be amazing. Well, you know, I do wonder what kind of restraints he'll have on him when it comes to his promos. WWE is a very different beast than AEW. AEW, you can pretty much go out there and say whatever you want. And CM Punk is going to have some handcuffs on him in WWE that he did not have creatively in AEW. That's something that He's going to have to work within. He's going to have to work within the limitations that they put on him. Is that going to cause problems? You know? This is also an Endeavor run WWE. Punk is back now. Endeavor runs WWE. Not Vince McMahon. So it's a whole different ball of wax now. Crypto and poker. Why did the devil show up on WWE TV? 
Well, at least that stops the talk about him being the devil on Dynamite. Thank God. I'm just glad I won't have to hear about this shit anymore. Oh, he's coming back! He's coming back! Or he's gonna be the devil! Or he's gonna be a Survivor Series! Like, ugh. Oh. Thank God it's over. Thank God it's over. Prince Vegeta. Roman and Punk is a mega match. What will happen to Cody? Cody is gonna beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania next year. That's what's gonna happen. Stay the course. Finish the story. Anything else is, is unacceptable. God of Seduction, real superstars. Cry me a river. Uh, Brumakian Productions. Just when I said it was a good show, WWE slapped me in the face with a Chicago-made punk return. And I'm not even mad. Uh, Prince Vegeta, totally kicking myself for not going to this show since I live in the Chicagoland area. CM Punk is back home. Uh, Wild Bird says David Zaslov and Warner Brothers Discovery executives are feeling tight. Is that that feeling? That, that, that their, uh, their asshole is puckering up right now? As soon as they heard the music? Heart of Debonair. What do you think about Gunther winning the World Heavyweight title as the Intercontinental Champion and then relinquishing the title making his run more powerful and the World Heavyweight title more prestigious. I don't like it. I don't like it. I want somebody to... There's a story there. And look, it could be somebody other than Chad Gable, but I think it's Chad Gable. There's a story there. He should lose the Intercontinental title. There's a way to do it where he can lose, but he's still in pole position where, you know, he's not going to lose that much. Of, of his aura if he loses the one match to drop the belt he could win the royal rumble look he could lose the title at the royal rumble and come back later in the night and win and i'm not saying that's what's going to happen but like there are ways to do it i just i don't like the idea of him making it this far and then just you know giving the belt up to go be the world champion when there's a story right there with chad gable if they can start heating him up i want them to tell that story Wild Bird, I honestly think CM Punk should work a part-time schedule in WWE. He is already over. Full-time wrestling ain't that necessary. Yeah, I don't think he has to be every single week either. I'm just saying he he is going to have to, you know, be around for you know, at least a part-time schedule. Not like, again, a, a, a Logan Paul schedule where you rarely ever see the guy. I'm not saying he needs to be on television every single week. And again, I'm not, I don't know that his body could hold up to it. He was miserable in WWE last time. They had him working himself to the bone. So, no, I don't think he should go back to that. But, you know, if he's going to be in the in the title picture, I mean, he needs to be around more often. Uh, God of Seduction, someone check on Tony Khan. Punk versus Cody versus Roman. No, I don't, I don't think he needs to be part of the Roman story going into WrestleMania. Juan Ocampo, please retire, Ryback. It was nice knowing you. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Take that to anyone that said he would not come back. Savage King, someone check on Ryback. No, that's okay. Stevie Hurley, CM Punk is back. Very excited. Wild Bird, what the fuck? CM Punk is back in WWE. WTF indeed. Eating lightning. Crapping thunder. It's time to eat that crow. Ask Wendy Williams how to cook it. I don't need Wendy Williams. I got a, I got a bowl of it right here. I told you. As soon as the pay-per-view is over, I went and I fixed the bowl of it. And I said, I have to start the stream and prove to you people that I was eating crow. Uh, the Data and Boys podcast, I guess Solo has to eat that crow. Yes, indeed. Dallas Caballero. Nine years ago, I left sports entertainment, and today I'm back. That is going to be CM Punk on Monday. I understand why WWE brought him back, but I give it six months before it ends in disaster. I hope Gunther still beats Seth for the belt. If Dr. Bropio, the bowl is empty because I finished it all in my belly now. Tyrone Dunstan, never say never in the world of wrestling. 
Well, tonight, tonight's one of those nights that proves that true. Boomerang. All right, everybody, place your bets. How long until Punk and WWE start falling out this time around? I give it a year. Oh, man. This is going to be... This is going to be quite the year. This is going to be quite the year. You're going to have all kinds of stories coming out. Oh, man. Mr. Notorious Chico, I'm highly disappointed in you. We all know WWE is all about their bottom line. So when their money is to be when there is money to be made, they were going to get filled. Uh Ragnarok, somebody check on poor Ryback. A lot of people are concerned about Ryback. I can't bring myself to care. Uh Cameron Spencer, I'm a grown man. And I understand how business works, but WWE should be ashamed of themselves for bringing that man back. All money is not good money. Well, when you're a publicly traded company, though, they feel otherwise. Juicy Nate, Samantha Irvin is so good. She is she is excellent. Samantha is great. Samantha, honestly, may be my favorite ring announcer since Howard. Howard is just in another league of his own, but Samantha is very good. Uh, lost the Sauce Boss. Our favorite man has finally returned. It's been a long time coming, but we can finally celebrate. A former world champion and main eventer in archery. Uh, Stainer. Look in my eyes. What do you see? Sala Monster eating crow with his turkey. Cute. Very cute. Come up with that by yourself? Zero point, my favorite wrestler has returned, not CM Punk. Uh, David. David Weymouth. Will Punk be Tony Khan's biggest drop ball? You know, it's again, it's tough because I don't blame him. There he is, by the way. Punk's still doing the banning. You could say that it's a drop ball. I mean, the drop ball implies that... Tony Khan did something wrong and that it, and that Punk bears no responsibility. You can't say that. Punk absolutely bears responsibility, a lot of it. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it for what happened and his ultimate demise in AEW. Can you really say that it's a drop ball? I'll tell you what Tony Khan dropped the ball on. And I've, I've already talked about this in the past, so this is nothing new. I'll tell you where Tony Khan did drop the ball. He didn't drop the ball on CM Punk. He dropped the ball on not nipping in the bud this whole situation before they even got to All Out last year. And whatever he may have done behind the scenes, he didn't do enough. He needed to do more. Maybe he did stuff that we're not aware of. Maybe he maybe he did talk to Hangman Page after the whole, you know, workers' rights promo. And maybe he tried to address the situation, but I think that's where he bears responsibility. He could have tried to cut this off. He could have tried to mediate this before it all blew up, and he didn't do that. He should have been a boss, taken control of the situation, and instead he let it fester, and you saw what happened. And everybody suffered as a result, including him and his company. That's where he bears responsibility. I don't blame him for firing CM Punk. I do believe that he bears a lot of responsibility for that. That's on his head. You have to show leadership in that situation. You have to you have to be the person in charge and lay down the law. He didn't do that. You know, he was trying to be friends with everybody, and you see what the end result of that was. That's on him. Terrence, uh, with Punk back, who do you think is the favorite to win the Rumble now? Um, it's too early to, it's too early for me to pick one person. Punk, Punk is up there. Punk is up there. Cody is up there. Gunther, I put Gunther up there too. I see, I don't, I don't see LA Knight winning the Royal Rumble. Uh, I think, honestly, you're looking at Cody, Gunther, or CM Punk. Uh, 187. Trap or die. My favorite YouTuber told me CM Punk wasn't returning. I haven't been this betrayed since the Santa Claus fiasco. 
Enjoy that crow. Oh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid sent in a $5 super chat. Triple H had his all-out 2021 moment with the return of Punk and Orton. Right, all-out 2021, man. And Brian Danielson and Adam Cole back-to-back -back on the same night. I, I, didn't uh, Ruby Soho also debut that night? So, I, I, you know, you could say that this was his all-out 2021 moment and our truth coming back. That's like the Ruby Soho of all-out 2021. Uh, Paul Carpenter, the big return was our truth uh molly mock shepherd just want to shout out gunther for stopping the miz from tying jericho's nine reigns with the lion team sigmund 87 good for me i guess since punk is back me going to the royal rumble will be even more fun uh mr aj all day with the 20 dollar super chat love the pay-per-view loved everything you do thank you been a while since I was actually shocked in wrestling. Wrestling, when done right, is a beautiful thing. You said it. Holiday 197, this may be one of the best pay-per-views of the year. Women's War Games was so great. Men's War Games was really good. Some solidly good matches for the most part. And two huge returns. Punk for World Heavyweight Champion. Man, you know, that's a dangerous thing. I'm going to put the title on Punk. That didn't work out too well for Tony Khan. I would not be rushing the belt onto him. I think that uh, you're asking for trouble if you do that. Jose Perez, I'm back, bro. Still in shock. Give, give Punk a live mic on Raw for five minutes. Tony Khan will soil himself. <laughs> oh, man. El Prezcat. All we need is MJF to jump ship and come to WWE. MJF is not coming to WWE. Uh, the Moldy Cheeseburger. Sprinkles, I'll get to you in a second. The Moldy Cheeseburger. Then we'll put sprinkles on the cheeseburger. It says, well, it's official. Ryback has retired when he said that if Punk returns, he's done. Done being unemployed? I'm confused. Yeah, I'm confused too. Retired from what exactly? What exactly is Ryback supposed to be retiring from? He doesn't do anything. I guess he has like a supplement business. What is he actually retiring from? It'd be like me saying I'm going to retire from being a camp counselor. I haven't been a camp counselor since 2002. How the fuck am I going to retire from being a camp counselor? Spartan Sprinkles, Pepsi Man in WWE equals KO's third WrestleMania main event in a row. So Spartan thinks that Kevin Owens and CM Punk will be the main event of night one of WrestleMania. Uh, I don't think so, but... Could that be a WrestleMania match? Maybe not the main event. Could that be a WrestleMania match? Yeah. Yeah, I think Kevin Owens and CM Punk. The promos would be great. See, uh, uh, zero point. Stoked to see Randy back, my favorite wrestler of all time. He is looking healthy. Hopefully a heel turn is next. I probably would wait until after WrestleMania. If Cody does win the belt, I think you want to build to Cody and Randy the world title on Raw. Uh, Melek Gaming. I wasn't expecting CM Punk back in WWE. When the end credits came up, I was for some reason expecting Randy Orton to hit an RKO on Cody. I'm surprised he didn't hit one on Jay. I figured that was a surefire bet. Uh, Moses, I, I haven't seen the video yet. I don't think Seth tried to attack Punk. I just heard that he had... He had a uh, pissed off look on his face or something. Again, I haven't seen the video yet. Uh, Darius Smith. Jack Perry was my hero in AEW. I wonder who will be my hero in WWE. Hashtag fuck CM Punk. Darius needs a hero. Who will be his hero? Eating lightning. It's easy to keep a secret when Matt and Nick Jackson aren't in the office. 
AEW fumbled every opportunity to compete with WWE. Rhodes, Punk, Cargill. Uh, Slipper, oh, we're getting some more news here. Some more potential drama. Oh, boy. That Drew storming out angry. That's his whole gimmick, though. Didn't you see him from the moment he walked out on that pay-per-view? He was angry the whole time. Maybe he was just in character. Slipper House Extra Extra. Triple H ate too many Slim Jims. He signed CM Punk. Give that man a Snickers. Uh, Jordan Bloxon with the 999. When you have time, you have to go watch Seth Rollins' reaction while Punk returned. Also, the deal is claimed to be several years. Yeah, WWE, look. WWE does not sign people for six months. So I figured the deal had to be three years. If it's more than that, it could be a five-year deal. Who knows? But I would be I would have been shocked if WWE brought him in for anything less than two or three years. Uh Thomas Aredia. I was more excited to see R Truth. Not happy whatsoever for Punk returning. He is still a cancer to the business. Canyon Price, AJ Lee, Royal Rumble 2024. I think she's genuinely happy just being out of the business and doing her own thing. I think if she wanted to come back, we would have seen her in AEW. Uh, Anis. CM Punk, hey Paul, I want to come back to WWE, but I'm still under AEW contract. Paul says, I don't know, get fired or something. <laughs> hey Trey Jones, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Anybody who subs, you'll get a shout out from me if I uh, see you pop up on screen. Uh, Deb to Dust, Punk returning proves that no matter the bad blood between the wrestlers in WWE, they always go back. Hey, look, Triple H is the one who brokered the deal to bring back the Ultimate Warrior and to bring back Bruno San Martino. Bruno San Martino. So Triple H, you know, I mean, he has a, a way of mending fences. You know, King Eric, just subscribe. Uh, Willie Iker. Oh, Willie. That's right. Willie was at the show tonight. Just left the arena. Great show. I knew Punk was coming back, but not tonight. Otherwise, I'm happy he is back. Mama Eichert says hello. Tell her I said hello as well. I was going to give her a shout out on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, I still give her a shout out on the podcast tomorrow. Tomorrow. I should say later today. I have to record episode 836 later today. Gee, I wonder what I'll, I wonder what I'll have to talk about. Uh, Rodimus Prime, CM Punk is back. Hypocrisy at its finest. Let's see how it plays out. Stuart Brody, CM Punk is the biggest hypocrite in pro wrestling. CM Punk was talking a lot of shit about WWE. Even through his run in AEW. And the bottom line is, when you have no other place to work, to make the kind of money that he is comfortable making, your attitude changes like when Sasha and Naomi walked out last Look, year. Look everyone, it's Samoa Bro. Hey Skywalker, thank you for that Samoa Bro. Thank you for the 1999. When Sasha and Naomi walked out last year, Punk commented on it. And Punk made some comment to the, he was fully supportive of them. And he made some comment to uh, the effect of, oh hey Izzy, Izzy Robinson. Just subscribe, I almost missed Izzy. He said something to the effect of that place hasn't changed it's the same it's always been and he's talking down about the company and the way they operate and stuff this was just last year so yeah and punk punk has run his mouth about wwe right up until you know just recently and now he's back in the family you know he's he's one big happy family right jeremy rose welcome sir Good to have you. It's amazing how uh, when you have no other place to work and you want to make money, your attitude changes about it. 
The Real CS says, per PW Insider, CM Punk's deal is for three years, and it did not get signed until today. Well, I wonder, though, how long they were in discussions. I wonder how long they kept this a secret. Like, Will Ospreay signed his AEW contract when he got to the building. Full gear. But I'm sure they were in discussions for at least a few weeks. I would be curious to know how far back the conversations go between the punk side and the WWE side. Charlie Sanchez. I'm one of those individuals who is not happy that punk is back. But you're right. He is good for business. JM, thank you for the 40 bucks. Like Vince McMahon did with Russo to WCW, I think Triple H sent Punk to AEW to kill it. He says sarcasm. I was going to say. The way things ended with him in WWE, I don't think they uh, sent him anywhere. But what a well-orchestrated ruse that would be, huh? Isaiah Duzon. I wasn't watching the pay-per-view. I wish I had. Didn't think Punk would be there tonight. However, I am happy that he is back. Uh, Mecky McClendon. Just don't know. Punk was my hero, and I felt legit hurt when he poured his heart out to Colt Cabana all those years ago. For him to go back, man, I know I'm not owed anything, but I feel duped. So Mecky is upset. Mecky is upset that... Look, I saw some of that sentiment online tonight, right before I went live. And even in the chat, there were some comments about people feeling let down. Of course, the AEW fans are... The AEW fans I saw were beside themselves. So I can only imagine the meltdown that is going on right now on AEW Twitter. We can call it that. I'm sure they're having a meltdown right now. Supernatural. 28 says Triple H told Kathy Kelly it was a last minute decision to bring out Punk. He said, well, he was already in the building, so what the hell? It can't hurt, right? You know what? If that's the case and they didn't tell any of the people that were in the main event, all these things I'm hearing about Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins and their reaction, who knows? Maybe it was legit. Again, you're playing a very dangerous game, though. You don't clue in your, your, your top people about stuff like that people that are going to have to work with them. And there are people who have some very legitimate gripes. You know, if you're springing this on them, like you're springing it on everybody else, you're running a really major risk here of pissing off people that you really don't want to be pissing off. And Drew McIntyre is somebody who, as far as anybody knows, has still not re-signed with WWE. Now, his contract is not up until WrestleMania time. But he is still, he is still not signed a new deal. I don't know what his issue would be with Punk. Maybe he has no issue with Punk. But, you know, let's say he does. Again, you're playing a very dangerous game by doing something. I'm not saying that Triple H needed, you know, permission. <laughs> he has to get permission from his talent. But I'm just saying, hopefully he had all of his ducks in a row. I just can't imagine that they would do that. I really, I mean, Triple H has been very smart about the way he's been handling things and everything, and all the talents are very complimentary of him and how accessible he is. And it would surprise me. I think it would, it would very much surprise me to find out that he didn't clue in the top talent about what was uh, going on. I could see Tony Khan just springing him on people, uh, but I would be very surprised if Triple H actually Uh, the Moldy Cheeseburger. Oh, well, let's go to Charlie first. Charlie says, It just makes me very angry that AEW has lost that spark that made it special from mid-21 to early-22. Uh, it's crazy the tide has been completely changed. Yeah, I mean, again, there there's a different vibe. There's a different feeling since everything went down in Chicago last year. There's a lot to like about AEW, but it is it is a different vibe. So apparently Sean Ross Sapp put out a report saying that everybody in the ring at the end of the show knew that Punk was coming in. 
Did he say when they were told? Were they told tonight before they went out there or were they told earlier in the day? When were they actually informed that Punk was coming out? Were they told as they were about to walk through the curtain? Hey, by the way, <laughs> that's what I would, I would like to know when they were told. Uh, the Moldy Cheeseburger says, R-Truth's return is bigger than Orton and Punk's return. Someone do a wellness check on Tony Khan. Is Tony Khan tweeting? I hope he's not tweeting. If Tony Khan gets on Twitter, oh my god. I'm going to have so much content if he goes on Twitter overnight. Imagine Tony Khan goes on like an overnight Twitter binge. Uh, Robotech guy. Great PLE, I'm with you, that this is indeed Punk's last chance. Triple H said in the scrub, scrub. <laughs> Triple H said in the scrum, I think, I think he meant, that he is back home where he belongs. I want Phil to succeed and have a great run. If he does well, we the fans win. Jordan, also per PW Insider, Drew McIntyre stormed out of the arena after Punk returned. Again, I, I would just be very leery about these reports tonight. You know, give it a day or two and we'll get some more reliable information about what's a work and what's not. Because you're going to have people who are probably working and you may have people who are genuinely upset. But just because somebody storms, you know, if, if a fan cam video shows somebody storming to the back, that does not mean that, you know, they're, they're genuinely upset. I think we're in a situation here where you know some some people might be allowing themselves to be worked charlie says uh i'm more angry that i flew to all out to see punk in his hometown to only learn that he got fired and now he's returning to wwe <laughs> that that is a punch to the gut i'll give you that you've got you've got a, a reason to be upset about that if i paid money to go to chicago to all out and he wasn't there and then he showed up in the other company i'd be upset too Matthew Amendola, my first ever super chat. Love your content. Punk. Well, I don't know if Matthew is still uh, hanging out with us, but Matthew, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Bones Jones, one tradition match would be nice with LA Knight winning. Yeah, I was hoping we would get one traditional Survivor Series elimination match, and it just seems like they just completely did without it. Or, or going forward, they're just going to completely do away with them. Uh, Joey Jojo Jr. The only bad thing about Punk's return is that all WWE stands talking shit about AEW. WWE will be fine. CM Punk will be fine. And AEW will be fine. Jake. Remember when the storyline for the NWO returning in 2002 was a crazy Vince McMahon wanting to inject his company with a, well, it was a lethal dose of poison. Hunter is really doing it for real in 2023 with CM Punk. Chris Perry, Triple H said Punk coming in was very quick. Do you think part of it was to get people to quit thinking about the Osprey sign? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I I, I will guarantee you right now. I will guarantee you as I sit here right now, as, as sure as I know my own name, Triple H did not book a CM Punk return to get people to stop talking about Will Ospreay signing with AEW. Uh, Fahad. Shout out to Fahad for that uh, $226 bomb. Fahad, he decided to stop by, drop a bomb, and leave. Thank you, Fahad. Devin Liffey should have had Jade Cargill come out to kill AEW 100%. Uh, Ali. Ali Kokar with the 999. When my older brother passed away earlier this year, he gave me great support, comfort, and encouragement. Thank you. You're a great person, and you deserve everlasting happiness and success. Ali, I appreciate that very much. I've uh, corresponded with Ali via email. I know he was having a tough time, so I hope you are doing well. I hope you are doing better. And uh, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it.
Uh, Charlie says, uh, what do you think AW was doing wrong that made it lose that spark that made it enticing to tune in? I remember after Double or Nothing 2021, they were on fire. I think they just lost focus, you know? I mean, they kept bringing in more and more people, and there were a lot of people who were getting lost in the shuffle and weren't being utilized, and then drama started to spring up everywhere you looked it was sammy guevara and eddie kingston it was sammy guevara and andrade and it was brawl out and then it was brawl in and there was always some nonsense going on that was detracting from the on-air product and that became the story and when you allow that to become the story you've lost the plot and you have you know things can unravel very quickly and a narrative begins to form and I think that was part of what happened. There was this feeling of like, okay, things are falling apart at the seams here. Tony Khan can't get control of his own company. And he kind of took his eye off the ball there for a while, you know? So it's just a matter of focus. Focus on what needs to be focused on with respect to your on-air product. Try to put out the best possible product you can. Focus on your stars and utilizing them in the best way possible. And if you can do that, and if you can come up with compelling stories with the, with those stars that you have, then I think in the end you'll be okay. When you start to lose focus and it's all about just signing people and signing people and adding people and having trios matches every week, you know, and throwing as many people in there as possible, and you know, that that gets old after a while. You know, come up with stories that are compelling with your top stars and give people the stories and the matches that they want to see. There's a reason why people are tuning out from Rampage and tuning out from Collision on most weeks. Clearly, he's not giving people what they want to see. He's got to figure out what that is and just stay the course and focus on it. I mean, it sounds simple, but, you know, for a while there, they weren't doing it. Some say that they're still not doing it. Trey Porter, have you seen the video of Punk and Rollins having to be pulled apart after the show went off the air? Uh, I have not, no. Uh, Donnie, after tonight, I will always believe Triple H will do anything he believes is best for business. Rizzo, credit to WWE and Triple H for keeping this quiet, and Seth had to be held back by Cole, Graves, and the referees, so we know who Punk is feuding with first sounds like it uh mr a boy you know i would imagine rollins legitimately won't be very happy if he finds himself in a position where cody came back and he had to do the job for cody at wrestlemania and then he did the job for cody a second time and he did the job for cody a third time and now punk is back and now imagine if he has to do the job for Punk as well. I would imagine he won't be very happy. About it. Mr. X, buy, rent, sell in the near future. Punk making it a year out without drama. Vince returning to power. Or Vince facing legal trouble for his NDA and other allegations. Well, don't forget that uh, Vince's home was... Uh, raided they exercised a search warrant on his home so we still don't know what the uh the outcome of that is going to be there is a big ass spider on my wall and i am watching him crawl and uh yeah i'm gonna keep an eye on uh, old peter parker over here as he's making his way down closer to me well that's a big boy <laughs> that is a big boy right there Tell you what, I am going to uh, take care of this little problem here. We're, we're, we're going to take care of this little issue here. He's getting away. Don't go nowhere. We'll be back in a moment, I promise you. Don't go nowhere. Well, he got away. 
<laughs> he got away. I don't know where he went. But if he's radioactive, we're going to have a problem here. So. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see if he pops back up. Can you imagine I get bitten by a radioactive spider? How ridiculous that would be. What would my superpowers be? All right, where did I leave off? I don't know where this fucking thing went. Uh, but to answer your question, Mr. X, uh, I think that Vince, I, I don't think Vince's troubles are over yet. I think we're gonna hear more about that. Uh, we have got a $7 super chat here from what I believe is Whiteface. I guess we gotta change this to banned from Raw. Well, we'll keep we'll keep the uh, collision super chat as is for the time being. Uh, Silver Tower again dropped a nearly three hundred dollar bomb on me here and said Happy CM Punk Day. Oh, it's a happy day, all right. A lot of people celebrating tonight. A lot of people not celebrating. I just know this thing is going to jump out at me. I'm all freaked out now. Brandon Vasquez, this is twelve years too late. I know, I know, but do you think there's a slight chance we may actually get Punk and Austin? After all, at WrestleMania 4... Oh, Punk and Austin? No, no. No, the, the, the ship has sailed on that a long time ago. Austin, I mean, Austin came back, man. Why tempt fate? He came back, he had a, a much better match than I expected him to have. With Kevin Owens, he took bumps and all that. I think he bit me. Uh, so he came back... You know what, man? Right off into the sunset. You know, don't tempt fate and come back and then you get hurt. It's like, come on, man. He got a WrestleMania main event. We got to see one more stunner. He got a win in, in Texas, in Dallas. It doesn't get any better than that. William Valencia. So now that Punk is back, how long before we see our favorite crazy Chuck Taylor wearing girl AJ Lee? Maybe the Royal Rumble. I don't know. I mean, again, I, I don't know what her interest level is in coming back. Uh, the Carlosis. Solomonster sweepstakes on the length of time before he gets fired or leaves crying again. Uh, we may have to take bets soon. We may have to start taking bets on how long it, uh, it may be. Charlie. Just coping hard because AEW made me love wrestling again and now it just feels like it's in the dumps. I don't hate WWE, I just hated Vince's WWE. James1992. Thanks for being an awesome podcaster. You speak what you feel is best, and even when you're wrong, you take it and continue like a real pro. Love your work. And James, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. I said, you know, coming into the show, I said, look, if I'm wrong, but Punk being there, I'll be the first one to come on here and say I was wrong. I was wrong. You know, they got me. They got me. Uh, Anderson Blitz, two things. Holy Hato, CM Punk is back home. And also, thank you, CM Punk, for finally making Ryback retire from wrestling tonight. Yes, thank you, CM Punk. We should get the hashtag going. Just for that alone. Thank you, CM Punk. Anderson Blitz. Thank you again. Uh, Ali, welcome back to WWE Punk. It is clear that AEW has no sense of leadership. They're happy to take advantage of Tony Khan and perform in front of dormant crowds on television shows with stagnating viewership. Yes, but Ali, say how you really feel. Come on, Tony Khan is already having a bad night. Let's not uh, rub salt in the wound here. Hey, it's the quad squad. There you go. Vince, Shane, Triple H, Kevin Nett. Ace of Masta, Punk already overshadowing the matches of this pay-per-view on his first debut. CJ LaChapelle, hey, it's been a while. Hey, CJ, it's been a while. Do you think Punk, uh, do you think Punk, they should, oh, put Heyman with Punk again? And do you think AJ Lee will return to the ring? I'm not expecting an AJ Lee return. 
Uh, Heyman with Punk. Not necessary. Heyman's got his own thing going on with the Bloodline, and honestly, Punk doesn't need him. Groovy Goose. Will we see Punk versus Stone Cold after all? I, I can't see it. At this point, I, I don't see it. Silver Tower, I switched to another channel so I can donate more. Aha! Uh -huh. That's very, uh, very clever. See, that's commitment right there. I appreciate that. I lost track of how many memberships he gifted, by the way. I mean, I'm just gonna give him a blanket thank you. Because I know he gifted at least 100. It could have been 150. I don't know how many he gifted tonight, but... You're on fire, dude. Kung Fu Joseph. Tony Khan should sit with his inner circle tonight like... Phil Leotardo and proclaim <laughs> no more. No more, Butchie. No more of this. Time to go to war. I love the reference. I love the reference. JM with the $300 super chat. Happy CM Punk Day. It may be mid. Uh, we, we, uh, we read this all. Have an ice cream bar on me, he says. As long as it's dairy-free, I can have it. Otherwise, I can't have it. Uh, LaShawn, brother, you gotta see what Riddle just tweeted. I can only imagine. I can only... Didn't he shave his head? Somebody said that he shaved his head. Uh, the Token Dom. How soon do you think we see CM Punk on another super episode of NXT? Very, well, the next time they go head-to-head -head with AEW, we may see Punk on the WWE show that night. Uh, ABK with a $411 bomb. You know what? I think that's worthy of a yes chance. I think that's worthy of two. I gave him one early. I'll give him another one now. Amazing. ABK, thank you very, very much. Too kind of you. T. Rivera in the chat says, yeah, but Phil lost the war, didn't he? Phil lost, well, Phil, Phil himself lost. It's debatable what happened to Tony Soprano. But let's be honest, he got killed. He got whacked. Uh, Boney, I want to be excited for Punk being back, but cannot. Because I have been through this song and dance three times in the past two years. And two times in the last five years. Hey, Adam Marini, welcome. Yeah, it's tough. Again, we, we see Punk has a track record here, and it's not a great one. So, look, if you're hesitant, I get it, man. You have every right to feel that way. Silver Tower, thank you for the 44 bucks. I'm telling you, this is all going to go towards building you that new gold tower. I don't know how long it's going to take to build it. We're going to work on that. We're going to get the, uh, the floor plans. We're going to start working on it. As soon as possible. Ian Noel Camelot with 32. Chicago Screamer here saying, wow, he actually came back. Triple H's post is him and Punk and a caption about a cold day in hell. That said, where would you go with Punk to start his WWE run? I mean, the consensus seems to be Punk and Rollins. Um, you know, I gotta... I, I, I'm going to give this some more thought. We'll, we'll talk about this on the podcast tomorrow because my head is spinning right now. But my mind immediately goes, honestly, to Punk, Punk and Rollins. I think that would be one match that would make a lot of sense. I just don't want to see them blow up. You know, if they have existing big plans for those world titles at WrestleMania next year, I just don't want them to blow them up because, you know, CM Punk is back. Uh, Branch Oak, give JD Pokemon cards and put your hat back on. <laughs> I don't wear a hat. I feel like I'm one of the only uh, content creators that does. No need. Terrence should be wanting to finish the new Alan Wake game, but here listening to the GOAT. We'll be at the Royal Rumble. Hope the show's is dope. There may be somebody else at the Royal Rumble, too. 
I don't want to say anything. Uh, DEH says Jack Perry, the most hated man in AEW. Not by everybody. I think it's 50-50. I think half hate him, and then the other half are, are grateful to him. Impractically Christopher with the $30 Bully the Clown. Super chat. A uh, very good show, but the three matches in the middle felt like virtual locks. Not a ton of drama, not that predictable as bad, but to me, that hurt the middle of the show a little bit. I agree. Especially like in the women's match and the intercontinental match, there, there was no drama as to what the outcome was going to be. None. Uh, M. Mills. $22 Super Chat. Hey, M. Mills, thank you. JM with the 20. Has anyone been over as long as tables in wrestling? I would say was most responsible for getting tables over. Who gave them the rub? I think tables should be a wrestler and be the booker. Automatic bell with the fangs. I would think the Dudley Boys. Right? I would think the Dudley Boys in ECW, you know? But you know what? Probably Public Enemy. Public Enemy or the Dudley Boys. I think one or the other. Uh, Zach Jones, so is there any shock roster move that Tony Khan could do to counter the punk stuff from tonight? Maybe start the final Goldberg run in AEW in December. Goldberg for punk. Oh my god. Is that really where we're at now? We're gonna have we're gonna have dueling signings and we're gonna bring Goldberg into AEW. Somebody asked me before about what what's what's the issue with AEW, how come it, it's got a different feel to it, All right? Go ahead, bring, start bringing Goldberg in and people like that. Yeah, that that right there, I think, says everything that needs to be said. Come on. Brian Anthony Rivers in for the fuckery from stands from both promotions. I'm sure, and I haven't looked yet, but I'm sure they're having a very reasonable discussion about what happened tonight. Right? They're having a very mature, reasonable discussion on social media about the return of CM. Jacob Harrison being there live tonight, those were the loudest pops I have ever heard in a crowd. Hope CM Punk can behave himself this time. Arabian Night, did you see cam footage of Seth looking mad and had to be restrained by agents and cameramen with Punk's return? This is the night one main event guarantee. Jessica Herman, to say I am stunned is an understatement. Holy freaking crap. This was on top of a great show. Yeah, lost in all this is the fact that Survivor Series was a very good show. I thought the two War Games matches delivered. Ken Masters Hadouken. It was teased tonight, but what does the Money in the Bank briefcase, or when does it get cashed in? They've been teasing it a lot for months now, and I don't know. I don't know if they're going to hold off until WrestleMania. I don't know if they're going to do something at the Royal Rumble. I don't know when the briefcase is going to be cashed in. 8-9 Tech, more punk drama in WWE, I guess. Probably, but we'll see how it goes. We'll give it a chance, I guess, and see how it goes. Uh, Arabian Knight, to continue, he flipped him the bird and spat towards him. You talking about Rollins? Yeah, it's, it sounds like a work. That sounds like they're setting up for a WrestleMania. Uh, Athletic Geek 89, objectively, Look will Punk everyone, main event mania. Samoa Bro. Oh, Samoa Bro is back. Will Punk main event WrestleMania over Cody? Both don't want to see it, but you think they'll do it. I don't think they work the same night. I think they end up working different nights. Punk could get the main event on night one. Cody gets the main event on night two. A Silver Tower, thank you for the $289 Super Chat. Uniman. Uniman, Silver Tower, please use or freeze by sent a $5 Super Chat. Did you see the footage of Rollins? Boy, everybody except me, I guess, saw this Rollins footage. <laughs> I was getting ready to go live. And apparently everybody in the world has seen this footage. And if it's on YouTube, it's probably already got millions of views. I'm curious if uh, WWE puts Punk's 
return on their YouTube channel? How many how many millions of views it ends up getting? Jansport book bags is Punk and Triple H embracing the modern day Bischoff and Vince hugging on Raw in 2002. Never thought I would see that happen. It's not the same, but it's probably the closest. Thing. Eric Bischoff tried to put Vince McMahon out of business. And Vince McMahon wished death upon Eric Bischoff. And they went to war with their respective companies for years. So it's not the same thing as Triple H and CM Punk hating each other, but it's probably the closest. Thing. James 1992, Punk against Shane at WrestleMania. First to get injured, loses. Uh, Tremaine Taylor, thank you for the dollar ninety nine eight nine tech. Bret Hart said Punk would return to WWE one day because Bret Hart is the man. Bret Hart knows all. Bearwolf says they already have millions on Twitter. Last I checked, it was close to nine million views. Is that all across? I'm talking about YouTube only. I'm sure across social media, it's going to get like thirty million views. Zero point, bigger pop, Bad Bunny in San Juan or CM Punk in Chicago? CM Punk in Chicago. Uh, Father, Father's Table 87. Solo, you need to watch this video. <laughs> you need to watch this video of Seth going off. Now, is this fan cam or is this WWE? If it's fan cam, I... Well, I guess I can't. Oh, I was going to say I could bring it up here, but I don't think I can. So I will watch the video. I promise I will watch the video. Uh, Swank de Sauce. Seth's video seemed like a work. The Drew McIntyre video seemed like he was legitimately upset about something. Raw will be entertaining. Uh, Rizzo with the $10 Super Chat. Punk already tweeted back to Riddle. Riddle said, hey, WWE, you thought I was hard to deal with. Have fun with 0-2 Punk. Ah, I see. Making fun of his MMA record. Punk said, hey, Matt Riddle. Me, this, who's the cuck who accused cops of sexual assault? So I see Punk is just diving right back into it. Oh, Please use or freeze by. Is it just me or did Punk look healthier and bulkier here than in AEW? Wonder if he's been prepping for this return for a while. No, he definitely looked bigger. He looked like he's been hitting the gym or uh, eating his Wheaties or something. I don't know. Prince Vegeta, bigger king of Chicago. Punk or Jordan? Come on. Nobody bigger than MJ. Uh, Bones Jones, Punk against WWE star matches that you're hoping for. Uh, Punk against Rollins. Punk and Roman at some point. Uh, Punk and Kevin Owens, I think, could be a lot of fun. Um, I think those would be the key ones right now. Those, those are the ones that immediately jump out to me. Drew Johnson says, CM Punk, baby. The Miz sucks. Chris Mike Sell, which version do you prefer? Golden Era Big Boss Man or Attitude Era? I always like the uh, Golden Era Big Boss Man and his old music. But I will say, some of the things he did in that Attitude Era run, cooking up Pepper and serving it to Al Snow and the poem to the Big Show, and I mean, it was... He knew how to be a heel. I'll say that. Arabian Night, it feels like Punk probably has similar WWE deal like Edge did. Could be. Uh, Jay from New Jersey, R-Truth stealing the show, Randy Orton back, and CM Punk returning. If this was 2009, I would be excited. Uh, Daniel Malcolm, CM Punk had my black ass hugging officers. Wow, that's a pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful statement right there. Yeah, some people are saying that the punk response to Riddle on, on 
social media was from a fake account, not the real account. This is why I say to people, when they get very excited about stuff like this, when stuff like this happens, you got to take a step back, you got to take a breath, and you got to realize that there's going to be a lot of news and a lot of rumors and a lot of tweets, and it can be hard to parse through fact and fiction. Don't assume that everything you're seeing and reading is legitimate until you hear that it is legitimate. That is all I will say. Paolo, do you feel that this is similar to Vince McMahon bringing the NWO to the WWE, knowing that there were talent on the roster that had issues with them? Uh, Adrian Soto, welcome to the channel. Um, it, it is similar. I mean, look, there were a lot of people on the roster who did not want to work with Hogan, Hall, and Nash. I mean, they, they had to be on their best behavior when they came in. They, they've said as much. Like, all eyes, they were getting dirty looks from people, and all eyes were on them. So, yeah, it's a very similar thing. There are going to be people that don't like Punk who are going to have their eyes on him, and he's going to have to be on his best behavior. That's it. Dr. Bropio, guess you could say we got punked. I'll leave. Please do. Maniacs on YouTube. Well, that was a great show. I admit I was hesitant on if he was coming back or not, but I'm glad that our truth is back. Oh, and CM Punk is back as well. DEH Sires, it was clear to me that Punk did not want to be in AEW after Brawl Out. It only went back because of his contract. That pop was even louder than his AEW. I don't, well, maybe. I wouldn't downplay that United Center pop when he came back. I mean, that was the first time in seven years. I, I don't know. I'm going to go back and watch Punk's entrance again tonight with some uh, AirPods in, but I might still put that AEW pop above this one. Food Hive. Food Hive is here. I wonder, Food Hive, did you see the classic clip I played the other night of, of one of our phone calls from back? It was on the stream the other night. I wonder if Punk is still considered old and washed up now that he's back in WWE. Some of these gatekeepers of the IWC are the reasons that I have been MIA. Well, Food Hive, you know as well as anybody, you got a lot of hypocrites online who... Look, I said this about Will Ospreay, okay? I did a whole segment, a whole video on this. If Will Ospreay had signed with WWE, all the WWE people who went right on social media and were posting that Osprey is overrated and good luck with that, he won't be able to fill a building and all that, they would have been throwing a parade for this guy. They would have been singing his praises. Welcome to the big time, Will. Can't wait to have you. All the amazing matches, right? But because he went to AEW, they shit all over. So you have people like that in this community. It's flooded with people like this. It's flooded with hypocrites. And so you're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get a lot of people who didn't like punk and said fuck punk and all this stuff. Who all of a sudden are creaming their pants and singing uh, like Mussolini. Like you're going to have people like that. Like that's just the way they are. Uh, Devin from NJ, is Punk's return bigger than Sting's in 2014? Well, that was his debut. That was Sting's debut in WWE. Um, and yes, it is big. Grant Johnson, what about a CM Punk versus Logan Paul WrestleMania match? That would be for the US title. I don't see CM Punk being brought in to wrestle for the US though. Ian Noel... Heard reports of Drew McIntyre leaving the arena unhappy. Saw Michael Cole and Corey Graves having to hold Rollins back. Roster was not told. Yeah, again, I'm going to hold on uh, commenting about any of that until I get more reports about it. Oh, look, it's our friend uh, Give Me Backshot, Solomon. Brett Warrior Punk, what comeback was most shocking? Hmm. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Punk. 8-9 Tech says, Z-Packs galore, baby. First time for Punk vs. Cody versus Roman at WrestleMania. What do you think? Roman and Cody. There's no need to turn it into a triple threat.
Uh, Rizzo, if they make this a locker room hates punk storyline, the happiest man in that locker room is going to be Jay Uso. He can slide into the background. Uh, KGB or KG uh, Black 24. Do you think CM Punk will work the Saudi shows? Uh, if they ask him to, probably. I think everybody who previously um, said they wouldn't work Saudi has now worked Saudi. So. God of Seduction. Did you ever cover the reports of nobody attending Mean Gene's funeral? DDP expected everyone to show up. Kevin Dunn showed up, so some credit for that. I have talked about that before. Yeah. Yeah, there, there were, a, a, I, think a, I think there were a few people there, but sh a shocking number of people who should have been there that you would think were not there. Hey, Justin Fleming Comedy, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, you hear stories like that sometimes. Sherry Martell and like other people when they pass away. Like big names in the business and you would think that there would be a decent number of people you know colleagues that would show up and nobody shows up like three people show up sad it's very sad sal cruz fightful saying main event talent found out before they came out other than that no one on staff creative or talent knew about uh, Bobby's World. I'm eating crow right along with you, brother. Doesn't taste too good, does it? Face beer as Sting returns to WWE next after AEW retirement. He just comes back. Uh, Father's Table. How long do you think Punk's contract is? Well, apparently reports are saying it could be three years. Geo. Ninja Gaiden. You're the man. Genuine and real. Thank you, my dude. Well, thank you. I try to be. I am who I am. No apologies for that. Oh, man. Henry Henry is celebrating his birthday. He is absolutely wasted. Casually hitting the slopes. Don't hit the slopes wasted. Don't do that. Uh, DEH says, is this WWE's craziest year? We went from happy to depressed Saudis buying WWE to Vince taking over Raw after WrestleMania to now CM Punk coming back. It sounds like an acid trip. I feel like I've had way too many of the Ric Flair Woo energy drinks and all of the functional mushrooms that are in them. Uh, yeah, it's been a crazy year. When I go through the whole year in review uh, later, later in December, it's going to be wild to look back and talk about some of this stuff. Uh, Geo again. By the way, you got to play the RoboCop game. It says amazing. You know, I I forgot about that. There is a new RoboCop game now. And um, they get Peter Weller to do the voice. I thought maybe they got Peter Weller to do the voice. Man, it is it is two o'clock in the morning, and we still have over three thousand people here hanging out. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. Miguel Maldonado, dear Ryback, in order to retire from wrestling, one needs to be a wrestler. I think somebody should communicate that to him. Fluffy Panda Wrestle Features tweeted Drew stormed out angry. Skywalker, with all the surprises, do you think The Undertaker will make a surprise entry for the Royal Rumble? I do not. Henry, thank you, man. That's cool. I appreciate that listening since 2016 i was in dallas that year for wrestlemania 32 i did a whole live sound off the only one i ever did in front of a live audience the monday morning after wrestlemania we packed the house it was at uh, frankie's downtown in dallas one of the uh, the great experiences of my time doing the show uh arabian night maybe drew left the arena because of money maybe he was upset wwe paid punk before negotiating with him on a new deal or maybe it's all just the work that could be it too maybe he had to take a giant shit and he wanted to get back to his hotel room before he crapped his pants maybe that's it too i know that feeling samoan fan ryback hasn't wrestled in five years he is already retired Maze de Great. 
after tonight, it's funny to look back at that punk promo on MJF about grass being greener and main eventing night four of a buy one, get one free. Well, he said extravaganza. I think he called it an extravaganza. Uh, DEH says the static hit me like a cold shower. Zachariah Sitchin, I guess Punk's heart really did grow three sizes, yeet. Uh, Zachariah also says Bailey is about to be a big baby face, yay or nay? Uh, yeah, she is, um, she's on her way back to being a baby face very soon. It's been long enough. As long as she continues to heal on Michael Cole. I want her to keep doing that. God of Seduction, I have bootios for breakfast, Slim Jims for lunch, and eat pasta mania for dinner. Woo energy before bed, where are my ice cream bars? Man, you keep eating like that, you're going to be dead before the age of 50, brother. Zachariah says, Spider-Man just got banned from the sound of. Yeah, I'm still wondering where this fucking thing went <laughs> he's here somewhere i don't know where he went down to the floor so i got my i got my feet up now where he is i don't know all i know is i'm not sleeping tonight because if he if he's in here that means he could have left this room he could be in the bedroom he could be in the bathroom i mean i could lift the lid up and he jumps out at me anything can happen uh god of seduction solo channeling his inner bone song Andre Israel, I gotta kill the spider. The spider says, that don't work for me, brother. He was a little too fast. I was gonna grab, I have like this uh, portable vacuum. I was gonna suck him up. And he disappeared on me. Rizzo, the spider saw you get up and said, that don't work for me, brother. Look at that. Look at that. Back to back, two different people had the same joke. That's how you know a joke is played out. Charlie says Solo versus Spider in a Loser Leaves Room match. The last Quincy. Got tickets tonight for my first in-person PLE. Last second from a reseller. It was well worth it. I would say you lucked out. Uh, William Valencia, Solo Monster versus Spider at WrestleMania. Let's book it. Thank you for all that you do. The Carlosis... The spider on the wall. Best return of the night confirmed. My room is literally bugged, says Groovy Goose. Matt Fisher. Now that we've got Punk back, can we get a Shamrock return at the Royal Rumble? Not forever, just for one night. I mean, Shamrock now is... How old is Shamrock? He's got to be closing it on 60 by now. Triple H, Triple H, I think, has it out for him. I think Triple H definitely... There's just something with him and Ken Shamrock. Uh, Sinkfan01, could you see Punk and Cena teaming up? Uh, at some point, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Greg93X, is FTR jumping shit back to WWE more likely now? No, it's not. They re-signed with AEW, so they're locked in for at least another three years. They're not going anywhere. And uh, they, they traded one friend for another because now they have Edge. They're, they're good friends with Adam Copeland, so they're good. They're cool. Uh, the Data and Boys podcast, at least you were right about Punk not being the devil. So yeah, I was right. I was right about that. Amir, can you point to your wrist and yell, it's clobber? Well, I'm not going to yell. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to yell. But I, I, will, I will point to my wrist and I will say, it's clobbering time. How's that? Lady Fire Panda with the $20 super chat drew Storm to the back before Punk came out. Also completely shocked, Punk is back. I did not think he would return at all. I think it's Punk against Seth the Mania and we get Drew and Priest at the Royal Rumble. Shout out to Silver Tower. Toasted Sheep. Yeah, I'm still here, brother. We got we to gotta finish this out first. Chris with the 999 on paper, it seems like a no-brainer CM Punk against Seth Rollins, but Punk has been getting injured a lot lately, and Seth Rollins has a history of injuring people. Well, Rollins hasn't 
he hasn't injured people in a while. So he had that rep for a while, but I, I don't think he's hurt anybody in a while. Uh, Nightmare Knee says, uh, no offense. And Chris, I'll probably, I'll, I'll talk more about that on the podcast as far as like if they do a match and what it might look like and that. Uh, again, I have to collect my thoughts here. Nightmare Knee, no offense, but I thought this show was awful until the Men's Survivor Series match. I just wasn't into the other matches, sadly. Your show is great as always. Nightmare knee. I mean, look, everybody has different opinions of the show. I thought that the uh, the opening War Games match was very good. The stuff in the middle didn't offend me. Like, the women's match was boring. There was just no heat to it. Um, the IC title match, I thought, was good. It wasn't great. The uh, Dragon Lee match was also good. It never rose to the level of great. So the matches in the middle were fine. They were okay. But they were bookended by two... I thought excellent war games matches and you had two major newsworthy returns on the show at the very end so it, it made for a memorable show and overall i would say it was a very good show uh eight nine tech double turn between punk and rollins so that would imply what rollins goes heel again i don't see that happening yet. He hasn't been babyface for that long. And they like people singing his song. Now, if you're saying Punk is the heel, that's interesting. But the problem with that is you're going to have a lot of people cheering for Punk. But honestly, Punk as a heel might be more interesting. I, I find that more intriguing, frankly, if he's the heel. But I don't think that... Um, they're going to have a lot of luck getting people to boo him initially, given that he just came back. Clone Force says, happy late Thanksgiving and happy to see Orton and Punk back. Orton is my favorite of all time. I think Orton set a record this year by, by wrestling on the show tonight. I think from I think what I read was that by him wrestling on this pay-per-view tonight, it made 21, I think it's 21 straight years that he has wrestled a match for the company. I don't know if it's PLE or just wrestled a match for WWE. Uh, but apparently, I think he has like the all-time record or something. It's like 21 straight years or something. Daniel Malcolm, thank you for the $1.99. Brandon Vasquez, if Punk faces Rollins or WrestleMania, what do you think, what do you do with Gunther then? Does he just have an IC title defense and win the world title later on? It could be. It could be that they extend his IC title reign all the way to WrestleMania, and maybe he, again, maybe he wrestles Chad Gable there. They do the whole David and Goliath thing, and he drops the belt to WrestleMania, and then, look, Bash at Berlin, right, is coming up at the end of August, so, you know, if they wanted to crown him there, they have time to build him up for that. Uh, Boney, for as popular as Cena is, has he ever gotten <laughs> there he is there's CM Punk uh, has Cena ever gotten as big of a pop or even a louder pop than Punk when Cena came back at Money in the Bank last year he got a monster pop yeah you should go back and listen to that reaction he got last year when he came back before he had the match with Roman Reigns David says looking forward to the Royal Rumble you have Punk and Cody start one and two. Punk's last match was starting one in the 2014 Rumble, and Cody is the favorite to start white hot. Yeah, I mean, Punk and Cody starting out one and two would be kind of cool. Uh, the Real CS, according to Fightful, the talent involved in the main event was told Punk was coming out. Uh, Kevin Murillo, the Punk Return has been posted on their YouTube page. 326,000 views so far. Trying to stay positive, I don't feel Triple H would fear for his life. Oh no. I don't think Triple H is going to fear for his life. I think that's safe to say. Yeah, the Fire Panda makes another good point. Cena coming out at the uh, 2008 Royal Rumble in Madison Square Garden. I was there for that. That was a monster reaction. 
So to answer your question, yes, Cena has gotten responses similar to CM Punk. The last Quincy, who do you think had the bigger pop this year, Punk in Chicago or The Rock in Boulder? Hmm. I'm going to go Punk in Chicago. I'm going to go Punk in Chicago. Yeah, it's funny. Rock got a huge reaction in Boulder on SmackDown. But I, I watched that entrance back with my AirPods in. And I, I hate that I even have to think this way, but this is the way WWE has conditioned me now. Um, I still think there was some crowd sweetening going on there. I think they were actually piping in cheer. Not, not that he needed it, but I think that they made it that much louder. I think they were piping in noise. I do. There's just certain things that you can listen for that you could tell. It just doesn't sound... It sounds artificial. So. Allie with a 999. A huge thank you to Jack Perry for helping bring Punk back to WWE. That talentless kid will never be a draw, which is a shame. That elite victory lap had aged horribly. What a bunch of goops. Jay from New Jersey. Prolo monster. I see why you hate Charlotte's moonsault. I love the women's war games match. I turned off the show after the Tisch School of the Arts level acting in the Ruffles backstage set. Well, you missed a few things when you turned the show off. You missed a couple of things. James Cooper, imagine being so soft you can't do business. Yet WWE, the pettiest of all, can. Tony Khan scared for his life. Merlot Williams, catch you on the replay tomorrow. Had to catch Wrestling Soup Live after how right they were about the punk return made the salt flow. Adrian Moore, big fan since 2015, back when I was in college. My timeline is about to be unbearable in the next week. Well, this, this is going to be a lot of salt flowing, I'm, I'm sure, through the, uh, the rivers of the internet wrestling community from uh, multiple angles. Jordan says CM Punk vs. Rollins is lined up for the Rumble. That comes from Kermit. Kermit from Twi uh, Kermit from Reddit. Okay, well, Kermit's been right before. So if Kermit is saying it, then there might be some validity to it that we're going to get Punk and Rollins at the Royal Rumble. So that's interesting. Arabian Night Triple H confirmed Julia interest at the press conference. Well, they should have interest in her. Doesn't mean that she's coming, but that is not surprising to me. They should absolutely have interest in her. Everybody should. Uh, Booba. After your stream is over, I'm going to watch JD. He said that he would not wear his hat during his stream. Oh, uh, if, uh, if Punk came back. But he doesn't wear his hat when we do commentary for House of Glory. Also, Seth versus Punk, Feud of the Year, 2023. Uh, crazy. The last wrestling event I went to was at AW All Out last year with Punk against Moxley, and now I just saw Punk show up at Survivor Series. Amazing. And what a super chat to wind down here from Rumpel, Maine, with the 499. Simply says AJ Lee feet. Things you see at 2.20 in the morning. Thank you, Rumple May. What a way to end that segment, by the way. All these comments, and all these great questions, and then we get AJ Lee feet. Well, that was certainly something. That was a lot of messages, is what that was. And now, we're not even done yet. And the reason that we are not done yet is because we have to be the booker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to be the booker. Oh boy. You thought we were done, but we're not done yet. We are not done yet. No, 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 no. No, sir. We are not. We have to be the booker here. 
No, we are not booking war games matches. We are booking a tag team match, a women's match, a men's match. And that is it. That is what we are doing here. I know some of you have been waiting all night for this. We're going to book some random matches here. Maybe we'll land on CM Punk, right? We'll start with the tag teams and uh, start things out with the Freebirds. Terry Gordy. And we got Michael P.S. Hey, oh, Terry Gordy. Oh God, when did Terry Gordy pass away? Was it 93? No, no, no. He had the uh, the incident. On the airplane in 93. When did he pass away? 2000 maybe, I think. Anyway. Fabulous Freebirds. Against Seamus and Cesaro. I like it. I like it. I like that match. I'll take that tag team match. I'll take that match. Alright, let's, let's uh, see how we do on the women's side. Let's see how we fare. We begin with Carmella, who I uh, read today has some nerve damage in her foot. I guess that happens sometimes when you're pushing out a kid. Something happened or whatever. Now she's got some issues where her, her foot, she can't feel part of her foot. And it's making it hard for her to walk. Supposedly, they told her that it, it should go away in a few weeks, but... You know, obviously, as somebody who wrestles, that would be a problem if she couldn't get feeling back in her foot. So we'll see here. Carmella is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Sky Blue. How are we feeling about this? Carmella and Sky Blue. That's how I'm feeling about this. I don't like it. I don't like that match. Okay, here we go. This is going to break the tie. Because we're one and one. So, we're either going to go up or we're going to go down. We begin with Kane. There he is. There's Kane. And it's going to be Kane going one-on-one. -on -one. Mayor Jacobs is going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Seth freaking Rollins. Two big names. Now, if we're talking that era of Kane. Maybe I should have given that a, a buzzer. I'm thinking more like Prime Kane. You know what I mean? But this version of Seth Rollins here, this is like 2015 Rollins right here. This guy was on fire. And then he hurt his knee. And Rollins is still very good, but I kind of look at Rollins like pre knee injury and post knee injury. There's some, there's some subtle differences between the two. But I'll give that the bell. I think that's fair. So there you go. We end up on the winning side of things and be the booker, right? Not bad. Two out of three. Not bad. Let's go back to your super chats here. We still got, we still got some messages coming in. Let's go back here for a second. Let's go back. God of Seduction says buy or sell. AEW exploding ring or Sheamus table win versus Cena. I go for the table win against Cena. That was it was that TLC, right? TLC 2009, I believe. Uh, Kendall Howard, how's that bowl of crow? You laughed at us. Now we got what we wanted. How hot do you think WWE is now? I mean, WWE business? WWE was was hot before Punk came in. How much hotter they get, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I don't know how much hotter they can get. They were already selling out most weeks. I don't see... I don't see how much... Uh, how many more tickets they're going to be selling to these shows that they were already selling out. Hugh Jazz... Do you think Punk is on probation like the NWO was in 2002? I mean, whether he was told that or not, I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be on probation. Like, they're going to be watching him to make sure that, you know, everything is, everything is handled professionally and there's no problems. And the last thing they want to do is blow up their locker room. So yeah, he's going to have all eyes on him. 
and Food High was cooking with my girlfriend listening to the stream and to her surprise to hear her man being called a filthy mark over and over. Didn't get none. Damn you. Well, there's always tomorrow night, right? Hey, at least we had a good laugh about it that day, right? That was, that was a good phone call. Back when we did phone calls. Hey, Food Hive, it's good to hear from you, man. Chime in, uh, chime in more often, so I know you're doing well. Oh, man. Let me check, uh, let me check something here. Let me check something here. Oh my goodness, look at this. We have almost 2,000 likes on this video. And We Love Us just became a sound off superstar. Hey, We Love Us, we love you. Thank you for becoming a member. Well, we're going to, uh, hopefully, we'll hit 2,000 likes, hopefully, as the night goes on. But, uh, man, you guys crushed it. Crushed it. This is the biggest stream I've ever done. And that right there, I guess, tells you the power of CM Punk. <laughs> that it blew it blew everything up. It blew everything up. This is uh, easily the biggest stream that we've ever done here on the channel. I say we because you and I here. Without you, there is no me. So I thank you for all of the love, all the all the super chats, the member chats, which I did see them. They just don't come up in the same window, so I can't read them all. But the new memberships and just everybody who hung out. Everybody who hung out. I think at one point we had close to 5,000 people in here. So uh, that's pretty amazing. And uh, Zachariah has one last super chat. Actually, we have a couple super chats here, man. They're still coming in. They're still coming in. You guys are trying to keep me up here. Zachariah says, the Triple H point or the awkward Tony Khan hug? Uh, the awkward Tony Khan hug is just very awkward. It makes me very uncomfortable. So I'll go with the Triple H. I'll go with the Triple H point. And Crow Feather Media with a ten dollars super chat, making a drinking game for Phil's first promo back, mentions AEW in a roundabout way. Thanks to the fans, references the Bucks, and finish my drink if he apologizes. If he apologizes, what's he going to apologize for? I don't think you're going to be finishing that drink. All right, we are three hours and ten minutes into this stream. And uh, I have a lot of work ahead of me for tomorrow. So I'm going to leave you right now. A uh, RSCHW. Thank you for the sub. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of our new subscribers. I hope you stick around. We got a lot more content coming to the channel in the weeks ahead. And uh, I'm usually live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Although um, I will not be live. I should mention I will not be live this Friday coming up because I will be at House of Glory, the darkest hour, where I am both an announcer and the commissioner. And we have, I, I would say, our biggest show ever coming up next Friday. We have Swerve Strickland and Prince Nana are coming to House of Glory. Swerve is going to be taking on Speedball Mike Bailey. Mike Santana challenging Matt Cardona for the HOG World Heavyweight title. A lot of other big matches on the show as well. And uh, I'll be there. Which means no SmackDown stream for me this Friday. But any other week, you'll find me live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Check out the main Solomonster Sounds Off podcast, which drops every Sunday. That is not on YouTube. That is not live. But it drops on Spotify, Apple all podcast platforms each and every Sunday. We are celebrating 16 years of the sound off all November long. That's how long I've been doing that podcast for. And uh, if you're new here, I hope you will give it a, give it a, a listen. I hope you will uh, subscribe and become a fan. That would be very cool. And I think uh, that's about it. I think we covered all the important stuff, guys. I think that's it. I think I'm going to go try to get some sleep. So uh, be well, stay safe, and uh, yeah, I do think this stream was longer than Survivor Series. How about that? I think we actually went longer than Survivor Series. Hey, uh, Juan Ocampo says, Full Gear got its la 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 
for its Full Gear pay-per-view and Survivor Series got its Mussolini and American Cheese. So the Cult of Meat and Extra Cheese, the, uh, the cornet song. Very good. Very good one. Very good. The, uh, the one and only over here. Juan, thank you. Jorepi says, forget CM Punk, bring back AJ Lee. And Base Beer says, Punk versus Brock. Yeah, I mentioned that before. I don't think Punk would be able to survive. I don't think Punk's body would be able to hold up. All, the, all, those, uh, all those German suplexes. Uh, Bear Wolf, it's uh, not on fight anymore. Uh, you can make an account on Premier Streaming Network. So if you can't be in the building, Premier Streaming Network will be live on there on Friday night. You can hear me uh, do commentary. It's going to be a good night. Our Bix, Daniel Bryan, just subscribe. Welcome. Big E welcomes you. Did I do the Prince Nana dance? You might have to tune into the show on Friday at the, uh, at the NYC Arena. Maybe I'll do the Nana dance. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe I'll save it for there. How about that? All right, guys, thank you for all the love, and uh, we'll do it again very soon. Thank you for making this the biggest stream ever here on this channel. I'll see you back here real soon for more sound up. Until then, go get some sleep.